did that accent in the mirror and thought, I'm nailing this. This is this is going to make this movie. This Morgan Freeman? This accent that I'm doing right here. Yes. Of all the bad accents, I would not include his. His is atrocious. If Kevin Costner gets to not have an accent at all, Morgan Freeman should surely have not had one either. But Kevin Costner does have an accent. No, he it's does It's like English not. Surfer. Oh, my God. Made Maria. Not a doubt. I'm back in my home of England. <laughs> no, that's his playful, like, oh, I'm a scamp in the freaking forest. That's, that's that. Yes, hello and welcome to Load Bearing Beams, the Load Bearing Beams audio program with a video component. I'm Matt Stokes. <laughs> and I'm Lacey. The... <laughs> I thought I'd have a cool name. Lady it, Lacey la- of Loxley. Mm, mm, left leg Lacey of Beams. And I'm Sir Matt of the Earl of Huntingdon. Of Undignified. Because I am uncouth. Anyway, this is... Rabble rousing, lowly peasant. This is Load Bearing Beams, this the movie podcast. Beams with a video component. That was a fucking mess. We are a married couple. We discuss movies from our childhoods. Movies that are important. Movies we want the other person to like. Otherwise, we will feel as though we have lost something foundational. That movie is more than a friend. That's how I feel. Sometimes I present a movie to Lacey. She doesn't like it and I'm crestfallen. There and I start to question myself. Who am I? Do I have good ideas? It's not just that. It's like kicking a relative out of the... You're no longer in rotation for Thanksgiving. Don't show up. Mm-hmm. Matt does not approve. It's like, well, I really liked that relative. That's how I feel. Yeah. It's not really about me. It's about me. <laughs> What's the it? most recent it's time that's me. happened? Are you not liking a movie? Uh, yeah, that was like me kicking the relative out of Thanksgiving. The last time it like really hurt like that. Has it ever? Dirty Dancing. Yeah, but that was seven years ago. Uh huh. And now you're kind of being nice to that relative. Now you. I give it three stars. I recommend it. I think it's a perfectly fine movie. Uh, anyway, I'd have to think back. That's the point. The point is, I don't want to learn that I have and have had horrible taste. These movies were great comforts to me. I I I realized yesterday why I don't have a lot of sci-fi and a lot of horror um and dramas in my rotation. I they are there, but I used movies as a way of comforting me, of making me feel like things are the same. We moved a lot when I was a kid and and my mom had several husbands and things were different all the time. Sometimes we had cable. Sometimes we didn't have cable. But if I had a VCR, if I had a movie, it made it feel like the same, the house we were at before. And Bringing a piece of you with you. Well, it made it there. Movies, especially certain movies, were my, were my consistency. Mm-hmm. I realized that yesterday. <laughs> this is why I care more about certain movies of mine than the, maybe an average person does and that's why you think you come at it from a different place matt you're more like is this good oh chance i do not know the canopies on the mezzanine that's how you are with it i know i'm always talking about the canopies on the mezzanine and yeah <laughs> but have i said no this it's before? good you probably have said it before but it's good <laughs> it's good every time you say it all right well how many times did you move um when we moved here, that was the 34th or 35th time I moved. Mm-hmm. But since you met me, we've put down roots. We've only lived in like five different places. That's it. Which Wait. is an extraordinary amount oh, of moves. We've only for... bought three houses. Oh, my God. That's a lot of houses to buy in such a short amount of time. We, To be fair, we would have to. We sold the one before it to buy the next. We do not own three houses. But because you moved so many times, you do get the, the get... itch whenever we settle down in a new place. You're like, mm, I don't know about this house. And then I conjure up a reason for why we will move. And then that house will be the forever house. The school's in the next house i don't ever go with schools matt in fact we moved away from where our kids i know any reason will do mm. but at least at this house we have these backgrounds you're looking at huh speaking of which if you're listening to this on audio i'm going to ask that you go ahead and subscribe to us on youtube you can watch full video episodes of every load bearing beams episode if you're watching it on youtube go ahead and hit that subscribe button and click the thumbs up they're not Meaning like. They don't all have videos of us. Most do. But you're just saying 
full audio that are in video I'm format. saying for mo- episodes of Load Bearing Beams that we produce now have full video. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, a lot of people only consume them this way. Yeah, and if you're not, get on that. And if you don't want to watch your podcast, you just want to listen, that's fine. But do subscribe just to boost our numbers and see the little yeah. jigs Lacey does during the episodes. I can describe them. They're a lot of titty. Well, I don't know. It's, it's a tiny, tiny, t- tiny bit. I'd titty. like more titty. Oh. <laughs> Not like that. Oh. You're very picky. You're a titty picker. So the business we always do at the beginning of the episode is tell you what's coming up in the next episode so that you have time to prepare. Some people like to watch the movies along with us. I can't imagine not watching the movies or it would seem very boring if you don't know what we're talking about. But we try to recap the movie as best we can just in case you haven't. But next week, we're welcoming our good friend Wade Hemel for back to the podcast to talk about GoldenEye from 1995. And that is a redo episode from us because back in 2017... He was on the show and we did that episode and Lacey and I both shat all over GoldenEye. I, Don't you know, have seen GoldenEye a bunch of times in my life and it's like a contrarian opinion that I like. That's the load bearing opinion I have is GoldenEye is not that good, mm. but no one agrees with me, mm-hmm. but we'll see if we'll see. We'll see how that holds up. Speaking of needing to see movies before listening to podcasts, two of my very favorite podcasts in love with horror, what I'm sure I'm wearing right here right now and um, the real for real podcast. That is why I'm behind on a few episodes, guys. I just, I need to watch a lot of movies. I can't listen to the poor things. One, it's going to totally spoil it for me. And then there's ugh, Night Swim. I'm just, I'm just letting my fellow. This is movie, the place to do it. Yeah. My fellow movie. Podcasts. No, no other way to talk to them. I will watch. Okay. The film, the picture we're going to be talking about today is 1991's Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. The, the, again, the jigs Lacey's doing are very distracting. Uh, 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 now, why are we doing this movie? Whose movie is it? Because my wonderful mutual on TikTok, Stitch and Storytime, who posts delightful videos of the, her arts and crafts, and she's a, a dedicated listener. So thankful for that. And when I did a haul where I found a bunch of VHS tapes, one of them was Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. And, and she said, that is a load-bearing beam. And I said, listener choice. Yeah, so we we we're doing it. Forced it upon her. <laughs> it's for- not like she's like, you gotta do an episode, please, please. Nobody ever <laughs> asks us to do episodes. If you want us to do an episode, we she will. I kind of wanted it. Could- All right. Well, All right. we used to do a Thank lot of listener stage. choices. We used to be like, you gotta leave an iTunes review and put it there. We did. We don't care. Just say something to us in a public Just- place, and we'll do an episode on it because we need content. We need grist for the mill. You know what I'm saying? But uh, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, a movie I'd never seen. It is always, the, my awareness of it was purely like, you know that in 1991, the second high, biggest movie of the year was Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. Isn't that insane? You think it has a lot to do with that banger ass song that goes with it? Because it basically showed the whole movie, but in like movie video form. It's like an amazing trailer. That's my memory of the it. The music video you're saying. Yeah. Everything I do. I don't know who that is. You keep talking. I don't know what this song you. is. I should have done. Yeah. Well, we'll we'll put it in. The, we will? We will just slap um, it in there. Yeah, I did. I did. I did read an article about like nostalgia for this movie and they mentioned the song, but I didn't know what it, song that is because it's not in the movie. Well, before Titanic, this is like the, the movie I think of that had like a mainstream song that got completely interwoven and I don't know which one came before, but they play the actual song but not in its entirety maybe at the end of the credits we didn't wait till the end of the credits but in the in the more like like uh romance parts were like the more meaningful marion and robin parts got it yeah this here. was kind of a thing i mean like seal uh um uh, yeah kiss, kiss from rose. rose that's not actually in batman forever but it's so associated with it okay but this is this is actually in the movie they played it two or three times but just as a sting just in the score you don't hear the actual like full produced pop song that's what i'm saying we didn't wait till song two in the credits so i don't i don't count say. the end of the credits oh. uh but this was an enormous movie and i guess we'll talk about before we get to our predictions, I mean, you had you ever you had never seen this. It's one of the movies where I thought I definitely saw it. Then we started watching it, and I was like, "Okay, I've never seen this. Mm-hmm. I would remember, and I would have watched it over and over again." I at first I I wasn't sure, wasn't sure. It took a turn, a Swiss Family turn. 
Yeah, yeah it does. He does. You, you put shit up in trees, and I am there. <sighs> this movie, you know, at the end of the day, one of my many takeaways, or no, my main takeaway is that's a lot of movie. You push, <laughs> you put a lot of movies in this movie. Yes. Uh, you know, you he put some hook, you put some Mad Max uh, Beyond Thunderdome. You put some Peter Pan. You, mm -hmm. Well, you, let me ask you this wait, though. You just said Hook and Peter Pan. Um, well, two different movies. True. Um, and 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 put some not Mel Brooks slapstick, but there's some. They let they let my man, my Slytherin man here, Rick Rickman. Mm -hmm. Yes. Just think, who is my stepdad, and what gender is he? Rickman. He's a Rick man. If you uh, ever, if you ever like, what's that guy's name again? If you ever just remember what I said. Great, thank you. I always feel like he is um, physically impressive and interesting and uh, dynamic, but I don't know that I've ever gotten to see him be 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 a be a twit. He says twit two or three times in the movie, and I go, "That's the word for you. You're being a twit." I mean, as Hans Gruber, he kind of. I mean, There's it's it's do Hans Gruber, but turn it up to eleven. Well, do Hans Gruber, but do it like in a, like like a mommy issues way, and like a, you're a little malnourished. Mm -hmm. He's a little, he's a little thin. I feel of Alan Rickman the way I said. Alan. I said about Gene Wilder, every performance is precious because it's like there's so few. He was gone too soon. Yeah, there's too few. Everyone is precious, and really, the only thing I. I'd ever heard about this movie is Alan Rickman's really good. He is really good. And uh, yeah, hey, Spoiler. he's really good. What about this? What about Kevin Costner? What's your relationship with him? So that's weird because like he's not one of my guys. He's But his movies are my movies. Um, Field like of what? Dreams was okay. not like big for me. Um, but I certainly saw it. But I liked Bull Durham. I liked Tin Cup. I like... There's, a, there's another big one. For that Love I, of the Game? No... Before this one, maybe? Uh, so before this one, you know, there's The Untouchables, there's No Way Out, Bull Durham, Field of Dreams, this, Dances with Wolves, JFK. JFK. That's JFK? it. JFK. JFK. I watched that one a bunch. Or, I mean, I've you seen did? it like five times. I feel like that's a lot for that movie. It is, although I've seen it a million times. Well, I love that movie so much. I love that movie too. Um, And I have a VHS. And we've watched it together. Yes, we have. Well, my speech teacher, Mr. Block, they filmed a lot of that in New Orleans. Uh, so I don't know if all of it's there, but he was an extra. You can see him in the courtroom scenes. He's behind Kevin Costner on his side. So it was like mandatory and speech class at Riverdale that we watched that at least for one of the classes. Huh. <laughs> Because it, so I mean, that, it because that would it. give every, gives everybody their ideas about the, the Kennedy it's, assassination. Because it's really a stage play. I mean, the you know the courtroom scenes. It's it it relies so much on the. I could see it. In I mean, play yes, form. it is. It, it, that section of the movie is speechy, but it's a move. It's a maximalist movie. Montages and oh yeah. yeah. Um, we might do an episode on that movie. The only I hesitation is it's very. There. It's I very would. long. Uh, uh, but it doesn't. It's not one of those movies that feels long, though. No, so but I won't complain. The longer the movie, the longer our episode has to be since we yeah, recap the movie. So that's my hesitation. But when I see Kevin Costner in anything, I mainly see him as Jim Garrison from JFK. I just see him leading his team. Why? I don't. As soon as I realized what I was doing, par, a thousand apologies, my lord. I just moved Matt's. Camera, camera tripod. It's like, oh, I'm going to play I with this. I wiggled it. Of stupid, stupid. Yeah. Uh, okay. Our setup is held together with like dreams and bubblegum. So I'm sorry. You can't look at it. You can't fart. I can't think without what's, it falling apart. What's your relationship? What's your Robin Hood movie? What does that mean? Well, I feel like for some people it's the it's the Disney animated one. For some oh, people it's this one. For some people. I thought you're like, are we changing the name of the podcast? What's my. It's not load bearing beam anymore. It's what's your Robin Hood, Lacey? You know, really, what makes you go? Mm. That's not what you meant. No, I wasn't. No, uh, Ro it would definitely be the Mel Brooks Robin Hood Men in Tights. But oh. I saw the animal, animal, <laughs> well, animal. I saw the animated one a bunch too. I feel like I could definitely go uh, line for line with that one. But I love tight tights. Roam around the woods looking for. Should fights. we have watched that too for we this? We may look like. Pansy. Yeah. I, oh, let me know. No, because it's like 
okay, it is to Star Wars what Spaceballs is. It because it made fun of all the things. It did at moments make me realize, oh, this is what they're making fun of. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was. Or when did that movie come out? Actually, I don't know when. After I think it was ninety three. It would have had to, and it, it had to be. No, it was a response to this. It had, yeah, because it this movie takes Even the itself, title Robin Hood colon something. That is why I thought this movie was going to like take itself really serious because that's usually what then requires an answer to it but i guess it's just the blockbuster success of it that made it ripe for parody because this movie's got some got some moments some some comedy well let me ask you this you can ask me anything what's a better movie robin hood prince of thieves or star wars oh my god robin hood prince of thieves a million fucking times over jesus fucking Uh, christ i even wanted to point out to you this is what star wars gets wrong no we said I don't need a ton of emotion from Leia for me to believe that she is upset. But that guttural scream Maid Marian does whenever she finally sees Robin and knows he's not dead. She's about to get married to what's his face. Crazy shit is happening. The the earnestness, the like guttural sound that she makes, you know, in that moment, I don't know if we're going to live past this minute. And I want you to know, I am so fucking glad to see you like, like, I just need you to have heard my voice and me to have seen your eyes one more time and I could be okay. It was so, it was just, it was just a scream. And that's all I fucking want that's from Leia. was missing yeah, in Star Wars was the scream. So I just wanted to go, planet! Yeah. No! My planet! When you hear Robin Hood, are you like, oh, good, that sounds fun. Or do you hmm. think boring? Huh, that's a good question. In what context am I going to hear it? Like, we're all going to play Robin Hood. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> well, it's just, you know. Yeah. Like, what's my, I guess if I hear Peter Pan, I instantly think that's going to be a, that's going to be a little, a little romp, a little fun. Just mm. the, the, the term Peter Pan makes me think oh, mischief. Robin There's Hood. a thing Hollywood has where every 10 years or so, they're like, let's try a Robin Hood movie. They also say, let's try a Peter Pan movie. And they also say, let's try a King Arthur movie. Okay. Crucially, okay. these are all answer. public domain. Got my answer. Uh the last one you said king arthur it makes me want to go to sleep and have diarrhea number two peter pan i'm like eh, probably don't touch it it's a little bit of a load-bearing beam hook number three is, is this one i say do it i could see this this movie's got a lot of you can do a lot with the locations you're given with the with the um the politics of it with the different classes of people with who could be rescued who's saving who um yeah my answer is robin hood are you remake? Are you going to remake a movie? Every well, every ten years they try to make a new Robin Hood because it's 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 IP that people are aware of that you don't have to pay anything for and you can do anything with because people aren't going to be like you 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 fucked up with you fucked up Robin Hood. It's you ruined I mean, my they, childhood. They will. Well, but it, it's so it's so flexible. It's, it's not precious. There's no single source material that you get all the things that you can't change. Like this movie doesn't have Prince John in it. It just right. Right. The Sheriff of Nottingham does the Prince John stuff. You can choose which merry men you want to include. You can Robin Hood can be anybody. He can be any age. He can be on the Crusades or not. He can be like low class. He can be high class. He can be a knight. He can be whatever. Yeah, I think this is the first one I noticed where he's of noble blood. Unless it, no, he. It, it just wasn't a plot point I noticed in past stuff. Then you know they really this was really important to this movie mm-hmm. this time around. Yeah, there can be the class trader Robin, who he's usually a knight though. He's usually Sir Robin. I mean, well, there's so many versions of Robin Hood. I, the oh. the the Errol Flynn one, he is Sir Robin of Loxley, who is stripped of his lands and titles because he rebels okay. against the king, which is kind of the case here. Uh, but it never. I feel like Hollywood has been chasing this movie, 1991's Robin Hood, because it was yeah. so profitable. Kind of inexplicably. It's a stacked cast. There's lots of stacked casts in movies. I know, but they don't always gel. And I, not that the, each of them just, uh, and it took a minute. It took a minute for me to buy Morgan Freeman and his relationship. But once it happens, it it's effective. I don't know what I'm saying. I'm just saying you're yeah, right. Yeah, you're saying it's good. Well, well, and this movie wasn't necessarily a kid's movie. So you're right. Of the three movies, 
the animated one probably isn't so important to anyone, honestly. The, no, I think it is. Shut up. The Mel Brooks one is a comedy and, and it's meant to be a parody on it. So you still have room for the serious one. And this one was probably more of things like that people like our mom's age. Our mom's age. Jesus. Um, this was for adults. So I could see this one being one that people have room for another. The ones that they've made recently, like they did a Russell Crowe one. They did. Yeah. And those are going for like hyper real and sort of like almost Game of Thrones aesthetic. Like the past was dirty and muddy and violent. I felt the dirtiness and I was surprised with how yeah, dirty but, this one felt. But yeah, I get Yes, you. but also, especially just in Kevin Costner's performance, he is kind of going for an Errol Flynn swashbuckling, yeah. simple hero. So, ha, 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 I'm a hero. <laughs> Which I would say he's not very good at. He's not. And all the robes and just it's like the it's just put robes on me. I'll I'll get it when you put all the robes. I need to be covered in so many cloths and then I'll just really it'll just like I could just tell that was his muse. There's a lot of comedy in this movie and yes. a lot of like horror uh horror imagery and sort of filmmaking. Yeah. Just in like uh handheld cameras and canted angles and stuff. And then just a lot of like classical, like David Lean epic filmmaking. It is like Four different movies in one. Yes, and a lot of a lot of gross moments too, of just a very realistic, poor hygiene teeth situations. Oh, the teeth all over the place. Um, the nasty shit the witch does. This like spitting. The there's just a lot of like bodily fluids that it, it seemed it's it was a little raw at times. But yeah, horror. That's a good way to put it. There are definitely moments of like I don't, I was not expecting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 Okay. okay we made predictions for this movie because we had no no awareness of this movie so we recorded our thoughts ahead of time here's what Lacey had to say I have a new sound on my soundboard I predict that I will realize 10 minutes in that I've seen it before or that I have never ever I have no idea I feel like it's going to be heartfelt and there's going to be a romance that I enjoy. I hope that it's funny at times. It seems weird to take a Robin Hood completely seriously, but I'm sure I'll buy in. I remember people liking this movie. Fabulous prediction. Thank you. Bye. I nailed that. Nailed the fuck out of that. You Okay. No, I did not. Oh. I mean, it was fine. It's, it's as close as I get. I couldn't track what you, you like. I predict I will have seen it or not seen it. I know. See what I, I did there? <laughs> I, I did I did politician level prediction there. All of it's right. Robin Hood is a movie of contrasts. Here is my prediction. Okay. So prediction for Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. I know so little about this movie. Uh, the only thing I feel like people say about it is that Alan Rickman's performance is good, which makes me excited. You know, I I like Dances with Wolves. But I don't generally like other Kevin Costner long historical epics. So based on that and nothing else other than the poster, which is very serious looking Kevin Costner uh, shooting an arrow at you. I predict that this movie will be boring and long, Um, but maybe like Cecil B. DeMille movies from old classic Hollywood. You'll you'll appreciate it just, you know, for its technical Hey, it's 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 nice that they got all these people out there on a at a real location and used real props and no CGI to be found. Maybe there'll be charm in that. But my main prediction is I bet this will be boring. You were Wait, I don't is it at this point in the podcast do you say if you were right about your prediction? I would say that it is certainly not boring. It's this is not, not a boring. boring movie. I had fun with it. Yeah. I recommend it. I don't know that I'm going to watch it again before we record our main movie segment. Uh, Cause again, this is just so much movie. It it's kind of toes. overwhelming. It, it, I did feel overwhelmed, but it is not what I thought it would be at, at all. all. I thought it would be a stodgy historical epic. And yes, but like, I do like the middle ages. It's probably my favorite pit period of history to learn about. I like medieval England. Uh, but I do kind of just, if I hear Robin hood, I think f- f- boring. Right. Although, you know, like the Errol Flynn movie, which I watched this weekend, and I, I actually watched it with you and our child a few years ago, and you both, lo- it's a movie what? from 1938, you both thought it was fun. Like everybody- What is, is it called? The Adventures of Robin Hood. Oh. 
is powerless to resist that movie. It's just like one of the most fun, good hearted movies ever. Just Errol Flynn with a sword. And he's going to kill some bad guys. And it's great. What did, what other Kevin Costner soaring, whatever the hell you called this, like period piece. What other Kevin Costner? Movies I guess the are main there? one I was thinking of was the postman, which isn't oh. historical. Actually it's post-apocalyptic, but it's him with a horse wandering around. Okay. America and I had to turn it off. I tried to watch it a few months ago and it's like I can't deal with this. I will say I do prefer watching Kevin Costner have fun to Kevin Costner being depressed. I I don't like poopy Kevin Costner unless there's a healthy mixture. He can be serious, but I like when he can joke and have that smirk and that that's what that's what's good about him. And I watched I watched Dances with Wolves which is this weekend which is mostly him being serious but he yucks it up a little bit. He's talking to the Native Americans. He's trying to tell them his, my name is John Dunbar, and they're like, Dunbar? No, not Dunbar. Very funny. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, I might have been just leaning on the postman being boring. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, this movie's kind of fun. I, I don't know. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't you tell us about the history of it, Matt? Okay. Uh, okay. Robin Hood. Let's oh, learn about. Good night, Irene. We are going all the way the fuck back. Yes. When did this turn into just history rather than the history of the movie? Well, you have to understand the history of Robin Hood to understand the history of the movie. Oh Sometimes I mix it up. When we did Dirty Dancing, I did the history of abortion in America. That's true. You are you're the, you're a grand mixer. You're yeah. A mixologist. I tell I'm like that. the movie Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. I'm all history genres in one. Oh. Robin Hood is a figure from English <laughs> is a figure from English folklore. Most commonly, he's presented as living in the 1190s during the reign of King Richard I, aka Richard the Lionheart. However, and this is interesting, mm-hmm. Robin Hood stories, the earliest recorded versions of them emerge in the 1300s and 1400s, and those have him living in the present. They have him living in the 1300s or 1400s. And then by about the 1500s, then they send him back in time. Then they're like, Robin Hood lived in the during the reign of King Richard the Lionheart. Isn't that interesting, Lacey? I would have had to know what was going on with class and society at the time. It sounds like it's a story they tell themselves to make themselves feel better about the hard times with a harsh ruler. Well, it's kind of like... Am I right? Yes. It's like when you learn that uh, the Odyssey and the Iliad... That Homer's epic poems from ancient Greece, he was talking, they were period pieces for him. They're like, this was set a long time ago. It's like that. Yeah, I can't even say how many times I've said that to anyone who'll listen. There's no, there's no clear origin for when Robin Hood starts. When Robin Hood first appears in like ballads and poetry in the 14th and 15th centuries, the way he is referenced is sort of in a way that makes you think that he's just somebody that everybody already knows about. Mm-hmm. Like as you often see in Robin Hood stories. So it's like, but we don't have the other stories that they're referring okay. to. Okay. What there is not is a clear historical figure that he's based on. Okay. Just anyone who would help out the little guy, I reckon. Um, I will say in this movie, it's the first time I understood the origin of his name. I was like, okay, is his name Robin Hood or Robin of Loxley? What's going on? But mm-hmm. I was like, oh, it's because he's a hoodlum? Yeah. And he wears a hood? He's of the hood. All uh-huh. right. Uh, but yeah, it's like King Arthur. There's no, There's no clear person that was actually the basis for these stories and the earliest versions of the story have him sort of referenced as a touchstone that everybody is aware of though with king arthur there is a more clear historical so isn't it just an oral tradition that Mm -hmm. you end up butting up against because at some point they start writing but they already knew the oral tradition uh uh yeah yeah because this is this is sort of an oral tradition uh you can't pinpoint it but you would think, well, did this ever refer to a real person who got became like a folk hero and got turned into stories? Uh, with King Arthur, there's more of a lineage, a potential real person who existed long ago. He was a, like a Celtic warlord who fought off the invading Anglo-Saxons, and then that guy got turned into Arthur. Mm-hmm. There's nothing like that with Robin Hood. Okay. But basically, um, based on the time that he's based on the the time that the stories come from he's kind of reflecting the anxieties of that period uh but it's a couple centuries before he sort of represents a champion of the working class as a champion of the poor what was he in earlier tellings then just like just a, a scrappy just man. a sword guy okay. okay he's appeared in a billion 
movies. Douglas Fairbanks in 1922 has one of the most famous oh, that movie. versions of it because he, in the silent film version of Robin Hood, uh, kind of the early template of the swashbuckling sword and sandals hero. And then 1938, Errol Flynn in The Adventures of Robin Hood is probably the most beloved Robin Hood movie to this day. Is that one like technical? Is that one like colorized? It, I or would it's never, in color? I would never show you a colorized but the, movie, Lacey. The way it looks, it just looks so... I, I mean, I, I know I'm looking at a poster right now, but I remember that being very colorful. Am I wrong? It is very colorful. Okay, it looks it's amazing. In it's incredible. But you understand I would never show you a colorized... I do understand okay. that, yes. This is where we get the Peter Pan stuff because, I mean, yeah, well, I'm men in tight, tight tights. Yes, I mean, he's often depicted in tights. Duh. And they're green. Peter Pan, everybody. Yeah, he's got feathers, too. The hat. Robin and Marion starring Sean Connery and Audrey Hepburn in the 60s is like a, let's take Robin, let's make Robin Hood serious. This is an adult romance between these two people. Mm. Uh, and the Disney film from 1973 is a big movie for people, mainly because of nostalgia. I watched it over the weekend. It's a, it's charming enough, but it is uh it's kind of a drag. It's only 80 minutes long and you can feel it. You feel it. Yeah. Uh, Robin Hood Prince of Thieves 1991, as I said, is the last time that a Robin Hood movie really hits. And they've been trying to do it ever since. In 2010, there was a uh, Russell Crowe movie. In 2018, there was another attempt to like modernize. It's like Hunger Games. <laughs> it does. This poster looks like Robin Hood. Taron Edgerton and, uh, and uh, Jamie Foxx. And I believe this one's set in present day, and uh, he's they're trying to make it rock and roll and stuff. Nobody oh, wants it. Nobody wants nobody rock wants and roll. That. Uh, nobody wants Robin Hood, I should say. You also just said, yes, it looks like Robin Hood. Well, I know. Did I? I say, <laughs> yes, it looks like The Hunger Games. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's talk about Kevin Costner. <laughs> What's he doing? He's holding his like, Oscars. Hey, you in guys this picture want some of these? Oh, I'm sorry, I did it again. God, no, you know what? I'm not sorry. I'm just, just the way you are. You throw me a ball, I'm going to hit it. I know. Out the park. Kevin Costner was 36 years old in 1991. He's six foot one. Thank you. Playing a 16 year old. Yeah. We did the math. <laughs> he is. Okay. <laughs> his, his breakout is in 1985 Silverado. In 1987, he's in The Untouchables and No Way Out. 1988, he's in Bull Durham. 1989, he's in Field of Dreams. He is a star on the rise, big time. And then. The Guard, Jesus H. Christmas. That's the fucking. I like Kevin Costner. He's okay. in a lot of movies. I like The Bodyguard. We should do that movie. That's a movie for me. I've never seen it. That's a good cool one. Oh, he's in some bangers. I'm not allowed to say that. So he's 1990, in... he is in F Dances with Wolves, a three-hour western about a, a nice white man who meets some nice Native Americans, <laughs> and he directs it. And it is a huge blockbuster and wins the Oscars for Best Picture and Best Director, hence he's holding his two Oscars. Jesus, right out of the gate? Right out of the gate. This old guy trying to do too many things in too many lanes, and they're like, reward you for it. The next year, he's in JFK and... Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. The next year after that, he's in The Bodyguard, which wow. is another huge movie. Yeah. So he's basically the biggest star in Hollywood. And then there's and like then, four years and then 10 cup. And then that's it. Oh, fucking word of world. Why, why, word? Well, I think Kiss that after that, you know, he's kind of chasing the, the one-two punch. You've got Dances with Wolves followed by Robin Hood. So he spends a lot of time directing this movie, The Postman. And he brings back the director of Robin Hood to make Waterworld. And Waterworld is... It's like the flop, right? Yes. Although it's the thing where it's not technically... It's not actually a flop. It's just... It was so expensive it was, right, that it could never have filming on made water. enough money. Filming on water, yeah, is the most it, expensive thing to do. And, and am I crazy or is there something similar? But I am picturing John Travolta in this movie. Um, what movie am I thinking of? They, maybe they just both had epic flops the same time frame wait in water world i thought or a movie with water like maybe not maybe i'm picturing when he's all done up like like a in battlefield earth yeah that's what you're i mean okay <laughs> look at that have you seen water world no. oh god i don't know it it, it would have been one i'd i'd fuck around with but i don't know if i did i saw it in college i don't remember it i'd be interested to see it again but uh so it's not terrible it's just expensive yeah some people like it Oh, I don't think anybody thinks it's great. It, it was supposed to be 
I mean a Mad Max for a new generation. This okay, although Mad Max was cheap as hell. I just think but of it as like an Avatar. A great, I mean, kind of, that that seems like what he was going for is sort of a um, elevated. And then James Cameron did Avatar: Way of the Water. That son of a what bitch. a slap in the fucking face! And Titanic. Yeah, which is. You push them together. And you know, James Cameron's ex wife, <gasps> Catherine Bigelow, made a movie called The Weight of Water. I've seen that. You have? Haven't I? Are you thinking of The Shape of Water with no. the monster who. Well, I know The Shape of Water. Um, what's The Weight of Water about? It's about like some lady. I don't know. I have no idea. It does, you know, I've seen movies with ladies, so check. But this is kind of, uh, this kind of all falls apart. It's not that Kevin Costner totally goes away or okay. isn't in big movies, but him being the biggest, most powerful star in, in Hollywood, yeah. it's over with at this point. Wow. And I'm sorry. both of these movies are such huge money losers that he kind of gets this reputation for yeah. somebody with, who needs a lot of control, will cost a lot of money, and it's just not worth the headaches, although he okay. has... Kind of rebuilt everything through Yellowstone, and he's like currently working on directing, I think, a series of four westerns that are going to oh. come out via Fathom events. I don't know. What's your question? What year was the postman? 97. Okay. Well, I mean, six years is a long time in Hollywood years. Yeah. But it was like his long away. It was the next movie he directed. And he's directed two. I think. Then he directed Open or- Range, and I think these westerns that he's working on now are his. This okay. is the fourth time he's okay. directed a movie but you but you um you suspect he's had some puppet directors in there that's what they say about him is that oh. he we, we, uh, uh whatever movie he's working on the director the name director is still kind of subservient to kevin costner and kevin may take over uh and but, if he were on broadway you think he'd run up and say hey this is a cause play i think he would okay, I, 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 well but um I don't know if he'd even have to say it, though. Oh, I okay. think you would just know. Got Speaking it. of directors, mm-hmm. director of this movie is named Kevin Reynolds. Uh, he made a movie called Fandango with Kevin Costner, okay. and that began their beautiful friendship. Mm. Uh, he went on to do Waterworld <laughs> after this, and that movie Tanked. caused a falling out between the two, although they did reunite and reconcile and make Hatfields and McCoys on the Paramount Television Network. Uh, he also made The Count of Monte Cristo and... 2016, he made a Jesus movie called Risen. Do all white men just kind of retire to Western world? Like, kind of. Yeah, it's like, you know where old white guys still get respect? I mean, a yeah. Lot, we mo- and you can mosey. You don't have to be in her in case you got a bad hip. You mosey. You mosey. And there's a lot of money in moseying. A lot of money in moseying. Okay. <laughs> because a lot of uh, old white men out there watching. It's like how Yellowstone <laughs> is the most popular thing on television, even though... We've been told to watch it. Yeah, I'm kind of curious. Okay. I am kind of curious. Uh, and, you know, they'll say it's red state succession. Although Kevin Costner himself is not a. You know who'd be in it? Yellowstone? Johnny. Johnny'd be in it if he were still around. Why? I don't know. You mean Patrick Swayze? Yeah. Yeah. He yeah, would, Yeah, Patrick yes. Swayze. I he mean, would be, he, just, he has a Western he, he the chisel. He would be firmly entrenched in the sort of retirement plan Kevin Costner universe. All of our movies are really about, like, just wanting a safe place. Uh, there are discussions around beloved movies. I find we do have this, like. If there were just a safe place to land for these men who just were gone too soon, Matthew Perry could be like comic relief over here in the Western and we'd roll over Patrick Swayze. <laughs> I feel like there's another one. Um, another one who I don't know. Away yeah, I say that, like... but it's not like <laughs> if they were alive, it's not like I'd be seeing this shit. <laughs> but just, I like Matt's version of heaven. Just crotchety. You get to go be and you get to go be in character actor heaven. It's great. I want to go there. Mm -hmm. That's the history of Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. And now it is time to talk about the movie. All right, this theme song, this Robin Hood theme song, you know, the ding, 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 ding. Oh, Robin Hood has a theme song in this in this movie. You're saying every time they, he's up to some hijinks, there's a song? There's a melody? The, 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 or it's in the beginning? The theme that's playing in the opening credits, it recurs throughout the movie. It probably is his hero theme. Yeah. But, you know, it played 
and I'd seen the first time I saw this movie a few days ago, I thought, wait a minute, that's, that's like trailer music that plays in lots of trailers. Oh. So I looked into it. Not quite. Now, one thing it does is it plays whenever the Morgan Creek, which is the production company that made this movie, mm-hmm. whenever their fanfare appears before a movie, they play the first 15 seconds of this song. Are you going to play it ding, for me? Ding, 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 ding. But oh. that wasn't enough for me. I thought, no, no, no. Yes, I recognize this, but there's a sting later in the song that plays during a trailer. I did some digging around and I found it. It was for this Disney home video like montage. Here's everything on Disney DVD. And you, who's got the rights to this shit? They just licensed. I mean, this is a Warner Brothers movie, so presumably, you know, Disney just licensed the specific song. And yeah, I've seen this. Well, Peter Pan. Mm-hmm. Yes, what it's do you weird. think the words are they tagged whenever they put this in the old Rolodex? Adventure, uplifting, yeah. <laughs> upbeat, hero. Uh-huh. You and I spend a lot of time searching for stock music for things. So Yeah, these keywords gotta, are very helpful. Yeah. And um, yeah, if you search <laughs> swashbuckler or... They're all instrumental. <laughs> I want music with instruments. <laughs> mm. um, yeah, you'll find lots of good stuff. Okay. Where? In stock music libraries. Oh, you're wrapping that point up. Hey Thank guys, a little, pl- little plug for stock music libraries. Type in stockmusic.com. Is that what it's called? I think it's stockmusic.net is the one we use. Oh, okay. All right. My first observation of this movie is oh. it's a very spitty movie. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Well, Matt, I have just a couple of things that bother me. I'm Only really, a few. I'm really Only a, a simple few, woman. Yeah. Uh, spit, hang. Uh, yeah, there's I, a lot of spit moments. I hate spit too. Yeah. I also, we are unique. Yeah, but this is a, a spit heavy movie. I mean, the witch does, she spits and mixes it with her blood and, yeah. and like, ah, and you're scraping it against she's the thing. I hate it, around. it. Gross. So, there's so, it's so much, it's so frothy. She's dehydrated. Uh, it's I frothy. Don't say that. She's dehydrated. Oh. The lady needs a drink. Speaking of which. All right. I well, I don't have a mug. Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. It opens in the same place that all Robin Hood movies open in, which is Jerusalem, of course. <laughs> I uh, was like, is this the omen? Did we start? Are we going to watch? You mean The Exorcist. <laughs> right. It is like The Exorcist. It's like the, the bar bet. Or, or the Exorcist Indiana starts Jones. In, or in Iraq. Like, there's always going to be some kind of. But The Exorcist is a movie where you watch it and you're like, I always forget that the opening of this movie yeah. is in Iraq. Yeah. Uh, so, yes. Yeah, so Robin Hood opens on the Crusades and we check in on a prison and um That's well wait can i lose you right away the opening titles indicate this is during the third crusade they're trying to take jerusalem back from the turks and i thought the turks the turks i don't think that's right and i go digging into some history did you know like mm-hmm. an archaeologist because i believe it was the um it was not the turks it was not the ottoman empire in control of jerusalem at the time no 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 no, no, no. It was it was it was the Egyptian uh the, the caliphate in charge of Egypt at the time. Uh but they did employ Turkish soldiers. So okay, I wrote down okay in my notes and moved on. I oh, give it good. zero Pinocchios. Just thought it was notable. Note taken. Um you say very spit heavy. I say very hair heavy. Mm. They they did a lot to make you feel like the dirtiness and like the the the, the period that this movie is set in except for they could not help themselves and giving the leading men some very early 90s quaffed hair holy shit okay i know we're looking at the we're most looking insane at a i'm sorry middle school play wig that costner's wearing it's it's batshit like that that's not how much hair grows in five years that is like not? that's like 20 years that's that's insane amount of hair growth. this is i've been on an island for for, for, years, for all yes. of my life, right? All of my adult life. No, that that does not make sense. His hair, he's like he looks like the lion in that uh, human show of the L- Beauty and the Beast. That the they lion had. in that human show. You know, it was like a live action, but it was a series. A live action Beauty and the Beast. Uh huh. You know and who wrote beast, on that show? Who wrote a road? <laughs> who wrote? It's the only thing anybody says about that show now is George R. R. Martin was a writer um, for that show. Well, what I know about it is that um, that really religious guy is in it. Is it not Kevin Turbo or Torbo? Sorbo. Kev Sorbo. He's he's Hercules. He's You're Hercules. Saying he's, but I thought he no, was it was also... wasn't it? Um, it was. Oh, it's is it Lane? No, that's Superman. What are what's another one of these forgetful '90s guys that are definitely going to show up in Christian propaganda movies? What, like uh, like Kirk, just a whatever. Lot. Kirk, no, not him. He was. 
I really must just have been Wasn't it Ron you. Perlman? Sure. Hellboy? And Linda Hamilton. That was that was the show, right? Oh, yeah, that does sound right. From Terminator 2? Well, and, and Terminator Linda 1. No, you don't. Yes, I do. I have a whole thing about how they won't give her a bra, and that's how they. That's because. Oh, they that's don't, true. Won't take okay, but seriously. forgive me. This is like one of the three actors you know. Okay, Matt is on some shit today. Mm. A big pile of it, sitting on his shit pile. All right. Well, they open in a prison, in a very severe seeming prison. Um, and seeming. And I wrote, yeah, maybe it's actually very nice. Um, they're just having a bad day. I wrote in my notes, is this movie going to be Robin Hood in prison telling the story of his younger <laughs> heroic days yeah. in Sherwood Forest? No, not not yeah. the case. This is just the opening to his start. adventure. Right. He escapes. Just a 17-year-old boy with a full beard. Yes. We, we arrived at 17 because later in the movie he says, the last conversation I had with my father was when he was 12. Before I left on the Crusades. And now he he's been in the Crusades earlier, for four years. No, he says earlier in the movie he's been on the Crusades for five years. So he's clearly 17, right? Two plus five. Maybe there's some travel time too. So maybe he's 18. It is a crusade. Is that a word for travel or fight? It's travel. It's, it's nice. Travel. Just nice travel. Just see good... some sights. So it's not a it's not a framing device. Robin Hood is in prison. And um, it's a book end. In this, no, it's, not. Uh, it's not a book. It's end. not right. Also, in this it. prison is Morgan Freeman. What's he doing here? Well, in the nineties, they wouldn't let Morgan Freeman not be in prison. It's true. Based on two movies, yeah, <laughs> but they're very important. Uh, what's he doing? He's there for you know being a rebel rouser or something. But um, I don't know that they had much of a relationship. But it seems like he's been in prison for five years. I mean, he he did make it seem like he had been captured pretty quickly, right? Cosmere. So he's been in prison the whole time. I just don't think he's very good at crusading. So like, <laughs> but I, later I, he maybe the four comes from being in prison four years, but being away for five. Maybe that's why you and I have two different numbers here. Maybe he crusaded for one year. Maybe got some kills in. Maybe, but he he makes reference to things he learned on the crusades. Like maybe you shouldn't go into other people's land and and make them change their religion. The Crusades taught me that. He seems to have gleaned some lessons. Maybe, though, yeah, he was only fighting for for six days and well, then spent the rest in I prison. I think possibly that's because he spent time in jail with with several different kinds of people who were from different angles of the of the fight. So he probably learned that from becoming friends with who he was imprisoned with, right? I don't know. Um, the thing they keep calling... Morgan Freeman, that's that's a slur, right? We More? Yeah. I mean, I know it literally describes Moorish people, right? Like, Which is not a thing. Like, it's 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 this it's a term used in history, but it had no pre- precision. It could basically mean like any Muslim, any color that they were. Like, okay. it could be a black Muslim, an Arabic Muslim, a white Muslim. They could be in Africa. They could be in in Southwest Asia. They can be in Spain. Mm-hmm. They could be in Sicily. So it's just very sort of generic. It's just Muslim. Just other. Okay. Uh, yes, because, uh, uh, um, but it, I won't use it. <laughs> no, you shouldn't. You okay. shouldn't. You shouldn't. I but mean, it's not, it's not a slur, though. It's not like about this movie. I'm saying I, I already, I already wasn't going to use it outside of this discussion. <laughs> so just... But they escape. Robin escapes and he, he frees Azim, the, the Morgan Freeman man, uh, even though he's a, he's a Moor. He's not like them. He wasn't on the crusade with them. In fact, he was the enemy in the crusade. But now, they're united in bondage. Bondage. Yes. Uh, and Robin's friend, Peter, uh, gets killed. And he's like, Robin, take this ring. Bring it to my sister, Mary. And you must, you must. And Robin tries to um, separate from Azim, Morgan Freeman. But Morgan Freeman, Azim says, no, I now owe you a life debt. I mean, you do get the sense like he just has no, he's nowhere to go. Like, this sounds He good. says later on that his, his home was destroyed, so he has nowhere to go. But yeah. he says right here. You saved my life. Now I owe you this this obligation, which sure. is also not a thing from real Islam or or real world cultures. It's just a thing from fiction and Star Wars and stuff. This guy's allowed to have his own creed. It could, yeah, it could have just been his own. Uh, this is as good a time as any to say Morgan Freeman's very, very known for his for his you know freckles that he has. They're they're like his beauty marks. I have never before or ever since this movie seen his his real life freckles worked into the makeup of the movie they turned them into designs they turned them into like more like a tattooed face look 
Mm. They, they made it look like it's part of his religion. It's wild. It's wild. <laughs> I mean, am I crazy? His freckles when, when do have they do never, that? The entire movie. The entire movie, his freckles are in a pattern. They are not his normal freckles. But they do incorporate his normal freckles. Can That's we, interesting. I, I like that. Uh, can we please look up? We're showing imagery on the... We or, Okay, never mind. I, I just now I feel like I'm crazy. Or maybe just ask the question, Morgan Freeman. They're in they're in like a shape. That's not normal freckles. Oh, okay. They made them extend all the way past like his oh, you're right. eye and Yes, I don't notice stuff like he's that. He's been allowed to just have freckles his whole life and in every movie. It's never been a problem. But in this movie they're like, No, no, these so are they odd. expand it. Well, like, these are odd. Let's make them seem odd intentionally. We can't just have you be a human with perfectly normal birthmarks yeah i mean <laughs> it, it seems insulting it, it, it's morgan freeman and he's great and he's uh always has gravitas and just commands respect yeah uh he is playing a character who is to these people who have probably never seen one a black person to a muslim right and they're all very racist and mean to him but he is the most patient yeah kind generous uh Such a competent trick. knows not only how to fight but how to deliver babies Right, it takes all their 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 bile with good humor and converts them. I mean, the embodiment of having to work twice as hard to get half as far. I, yes, it's just he has to prove himself over and over and over. And so again. maybe the the freckles are they trying to make him seem even more other? I don't. Yeah, know. Yeah. Well, I mean, I just think they were like these freckles will be weird in this sense in this in this world. Freckles were not a thing until you know the second century. They weren't. Of course they were. Oh. Matt. I'm just saying that the, I, the, this movie made a couple of bad aesthetic choices, so I, I do not put it past them that this was just a this was just a, a weird call. Um, the other I don't know if you call it aesthetic, maybe audio ch- weird audio choice, but like there's no way Morgan Freeman, an amazingly trained, polished actor, did that accent in the mirror and thought. I'm nailing this. This is this is gonna make this movie. This Morgan accent Freeman? that I'm doing right here. Yes. Of all the bad accents, I would not include his. His is atrocious. It's so his voice is so pleasant all by itself. I'm just saying, if Kevin Costner gets to not have an accent at all, Morgan Freeman should surely have not had one either. But Kevin Costner does have an accent. No, he it's does like not. English surfer. Oh my god. Made Marion. Not a doubt. I'm back in my home of England. <laughs> no, that's his playful like, oh, I'm a scamp in the freaking forest. That's that's that. The accents are not crazy. strong in this movie. Morgan Freeman's I would I would put at the bottom of the list it of bad made accents. It's me nuts the whole t- it's really? the only one that I noticed because I Christian get- Slater? There's an accent? Yes. He was just slatering it up. No, he was just... Welcome to Nottingham Forest. <laughs> What's that um, accent? Blimey. <laughs> yeah. Kilometers. Mm, I can't do one, but it's like no. he seems so easy you to just do, do an Jack impression. Just do Jack Nicholson. Right, right. Uh, I guess... No, fuck it. Never mind. Jiminy Jillikers, Robin <laughs> Hood. Well... Little rich boy. Okay, so then we cut back to England. We see the Loxley homestead, Robin Hood's father. He's depressed about his son, doesn't know where he is, so he's writing a letter. Dearest sir, kindly tell me where my son is, signed Loxley, and then... I thought for sure that letter would come back around or yeah. like get to his hands. But it's like, it's, yeah, it's neither here nor there. It's just extemporary. He's, he's writing to us, the he's audience, to, us, yes. to tell us. I am a father who has not seen his son for five score. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And then uh, he is beckoned outside, and um, there's some Death Eaters outside his right. house. So, well, or he's going to a Venetian sex party. Well, that's the other out. Look at that mask. So when I see the Death Eaters, when I see that this movie has um, the dark arts in it, I sit up a little straighter in my chair. Mm-hmm. I'm like, sir, eruption. I was not expecting this. So this party of weird cultist guys, led by the sheriff of Nottingham, Alan Rickman, um. MVP of the movie calls out Sir Lord Loxley, and they they kill him and right. they confiscate his lands. And they're just—I wasn't totally clear on this, and as it was happening, but they're just clearing out anyone who might have some kind of claim to running the town. Any political anyone rivals. who might be higher than a sheriff, let's say. It really sucks if you're from a town that has a silly name back in this time, because you, you seem to not be able to ever just say you're from. Europe, or you gotta, 
He's the sheriff of Nottingham, or mm-hmm. isn't it Rottingham in um, Rotterdam? It's something. No, it's something in the silly Netherlands? in the Mel Brooks version. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> I'm just if, if you're if you're from you know Sugar Bottom, and I am Lord Roth of Sugar you're Bottom. Sugar it, Bottom. I like that you're so you're so noble that your name is just the place that you own. So he's Nottingham. It's both his name. It's name and his. Title the sheriff of Nottingham, but his name is also Nottingham. Oh, I thought he's just the sheriff of Nottingham. But it's the same thing. That I mean, that's where names like noble titles come from. If you're the Earl of whatever, your last name is just the name of that place. If you're the Earl of Windsor, okay, so your last like name is just literally Windsor. Everyone born in that place is related to each other. Therefore, they all have that last name. Or everyone who owns it. <sighs> yeah. Well, well, I can't. You want to talk about feudalism? Nope. I don't. Let me tell you about sheriffs, no. though. Because you like words. You like word origins. Oh, I do like word origins. Okay, so in medieval England, mm. uh, people who re- whose job it was to run estates were called reeves. I'm the reeve of this estate. The word shire means county, just area of land. That's why today counties in England have the word shire at the end of them. Yorkshire, just sh- Yorkshire. I got it. So a Shire Reeve ran an entire county. A Shire Reeve, a oh, sheriff. sheriff. That's what it means. You are in charge. The king can't run the whole country, so you get a parcel of land, and you're the what? top official in that parcel of land. What I was going to ask you is when you said run a home, do you mean like the head butler? You don't mean like the person who owns the house? But I mean, I mean, run, I mean, be the actual person in charge. I don't know what that means. If like I own this house, I would think I'm the person in charge. But if I had a manor and I needed like someone who was my liaison to do everything, makes ev- makes the no, trains. No, I'm not talking about that person. I'm not talking about the, the. You're talking about the homeowner. Yeah. Just say that. What runs a home versus ho- owns the home? I'm talking about running things. a county. The county county isn't yes, owned but by. But you start a reeve. However, is the person who ran a household. That is where you started. That is why I wanted the clarification. Mm-hmm. You get my my meaning. Okay. I'm talking about like a little house in Metairie. Like I, I got it. House? Yes, the, the concept of ownership oh. is a little weird here because it's like, well, really, the king owns everything. And, and again, if you'd said own, I would have understood. You said run. That's where the confusion came. And from. And these are okay. You've... They are not in dis- interchangeable. They are not run and own. No. They kill Robin Hood's dad. They kill his dad. But Robin. Uh, ew. Gets, he arrives at home and he's so happy to be back. He so kisses happy. the sand. He grabs wet sand and squeezes it and rubs his fucking nose in it. I mean, you have grass 10 yards away. Wait. Wait till you get there. Now that shit's just he all He read over the you. Odyssey. He knows Odysseus did this. Oh, is it a thing? I think it's you a thing. I don't the know. Earth, but like the earth is 10 yards. Just walk. He saw it in a movie. He thought it looks cool. Now he's doing it. He's like, this isn't as he cool as it. I thought it would be. This man is in 20 cloaks. He is he is a laundry pile. He just put all of his laundry that he owns to keep him warm in the water because he's kissing wet Yeah, sand. but he's so close to home. It doesn't matter. I'll be able to do laundry so soon. Uh, here's a great thing about this movie. He was 12 when he lived there last. He's not going to have anything that fits him there. He's wearing everything that fits him on his person right now. It's like that fucking episode of Friends when Joey put on all his clothes. He didn't think it through. He didn't think it through. Did you want thing about something? this movie that's good is location filming. <laughs> all of well, it f- is filming. Pretty. This is uh, these the cliffs of it's not Dover. I wrote down where it is. It's uh Seven sisters. I believe you. Seven sisters, which are you know kind of by Dover in the south of England, mm. and then they walk a little bit, and then they film on Hadrian's Wall, which is in the north of England. So it seems iconic. I feel like that wall has been in many a movie. Yeah, that wall was the ancient boundary between Roman Britain and the barbarian so, lands of the north. So back then, people were very short. Well, back like, then, the wall was taller. <laughs> it has been thousands of years, but yeah, basically. Oh wait, like like the the earth has built up around it, not it has come down. I think earth got tall. I don't know which it is. You do research, but not on the things that I care about. <sighs> All I care about are heights. That's why I hate telling you things. You <laughs> always ask me questions that I don't know the answers. To. Oh my God! Says the guy who asks our children trivia until they get one wrong. I don't. Do- you have always. I have always. Always. When's the last time I did that? That's fun. That's how you play trivia. <laughs> yeah, but no one's asking to play trivia. They're so excited that they know a thing, and then you got to ask them the next thing. I don't do don't... that. You know what you do? Nope. I'm perfect. <laughs> I sit here as and I pose take a question to the shit. kid, like, "How was your day?" And you answer for the kid. 
I stopped doing that years ago. Okay. At the same time, I stopped doing my thing. I can't wait to point it out. If you don't look. Hadrian's Wall. Hadrian's Wall, Lacey, was the inspiration <gasps> for the wall in Game of Thrones. Isn't it cool that there's actually a wall? <laughs> Keep I out the doubted. barbarian tribes of the north, oh. meaning the Celts, who we meet later. Oh, they do seem like wildlings because of their pelts. The Celts and their pelts. Do you think that that's, that's how you know? Okay. You don't think that's one caused the other? Now, I'm sure being called a Celt didn't cause the pelt, but wearing lots of pelts might have indeed made you a Celt. Yeah. Yeah. Like maybe a, a, most people's last name is Kelly. They wear pelts. Celt. What else? Tell us, tell us what else is going on here. All right. Um, well, a, 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 sort of confusing to me. For, Robin Hood makes it to where the, the other people in the boat besides him and um, Morgan Freeman's character. Like he, Robin Hood says, hey, when we get over here, jump Hazim. Hazim? Azim. Azim. And why? I don't know. To give him an excuse to like, he says it's to give him an excuse to leave, to leave. I keep wanting to call him Robin. That's his name. Mm -hmm. To leave Robin. To to release him from his whatever, blood oath. First he tries, hey, you can go now. Azim says, nope, not going to do it. Yeah. I thought you'd, I thought you'd say (laughs) that. And then then those two guys jump him and he fights them off. But he fights them off because he's a great fighter. But what? All you did was get two people hurt yeah. and scared but then guy. I had to try. To try to do what? To force him back on the boat and back to oh. the lands of... Where they, he has nothing. Again, they don't specify where he's from. He's just, I'm Moorish. I'm yeah, from... No, we've been on this boat for three weeks. We've eaten all the supplies. We've shit and pissed on this boat. You get back on the boat. And get on right now. And get on not, right let's the go, fuck now. Go you rest. Know, empty your bladder. You, you probably want to get going, right? Yeah, but bye I don't want anyone to see me with you. Okay, it's it didn't insulting. Work. I had to try. I'll just try. Let's get some Zah. Um, <laughs> read some Zans. This, <laughs> so I guess this is before Robin is now aware of all the horrific shit that's happened. It's so this is the 100? five minutes of the movie where he's just skipping around like, oh, <laughs> he's wearing all oh. of his laundry and he's dancing on his walls and he's looking at a scamp in a tree. What is this? What mischief does thou make, little boy? And he ev- killed a deer? Yeah. A everything dad? Azim says, he's like, oh, yeah, you met a woman? Was she pretty? Or, Tell oh, me. You were. He went to prison for years for this woman. Tell me about the burb, though. Did you bone? But yeah, this kid, Jesus this little kid, he's Christ. getting chased by these evil men. And Robin is like, me thinks me must <laughs> interfere. <laughs> so he does. That is a great villain, though. The cousin... Guy uh, of Gisborne. Tell me, do his voice. Um, yeah, 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 his voice. Ah, uh, Mabel. Uh, uh, did you kill a deer? I don't deer? remember his specific voice. <laughs> did you kill a deer? No. <laughs> uh, um, it's, it's I, I wrote down that he looks like he's from Twilight. Oh, he does. But, I was thinking Game of Thrones, but you're right. It's Twilight. It's like, it's a guy from Venice. Nope. Rome, where they keep the Pope. The Pope is from Rome, but in Twilight, it's not. Where did they keep the Pope in they Twilight? Him, oh, the, say the word. Vatican City. So the Vatican. Okay. He looks like one of those um, vampires. <laughs> hey, God. Okay, but look, here's why it's confusing. Because in the Twilight books, oh it's not God. Vatican City. It's a different place in Italy. Cares, but I'm saying that set, the set of vampires that's with that blonde actress. The Valhalla, Valhara, okay. the v- Michael Sheen, and and Dakota or uh, Dakota Fanning. That's it. Or is it Elf? Yeah, it's Dakota Fanning. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what it is. Okay, here's another thing about shooting in England, and this tree that that the little kids in this tree became known as the Robin Hood tree. Oh, uh, until it was vandalized last year, and they had peed to cut on? it down. Yeah, peed on too much <gasps> pee. I read this article. You tracked other poor boys that way. I read this article many years ago on Slate. And it was like a classic Slate contrarian thing. Like actually pizza's bad or whatever that they used to do. Okay. And it was actually New Zealand was the wrong place to film Lord of the Rings. Which sounds in- so Middle outrageous. Middle Earth is made up. What does it matter? But Middle Earth is England. Like at least the way hey. it's described by J.R.R. Tolkien. You just got to go where the taxes will let you, right? I mean, we're on a budget, people. And it's like, it's not, I'm not saying I agree with that because I like, I love the Lord of the Rings movies and they look great, but I think there is something to New Zealand looks too like pristine mm. and new and clean and big. And England here looks like, yeah, people have been living here like for shite. forever. 
and everything's kind of crumbling and it just looks more appropriate. I will say that the, the, uh, it's just darker, like the weather's worse in England. Just always kind of a fog, kind of a yeah. dark gloominess where New Zealand is like bright. And they were talking angry. about both the things that are there, like man-made things that are there and just the geology is literally newer, like New Zealand formed more recently uh, does it make, geologically. But, oh, okay. Like but the you look at it, crash together. Yeah, you look at it and it looks too new. I don't know. That's all. I just thought of that as we watched this and I where thought how grateful Ga- I was that they filmed all this stuff here. Where was Game of Thrones mainly filmed? Lots of different places. Ireland, Iceland, Croatia. Those were the three main places. Here? In this, uh, I don't know if they filmed it in England. Area? Okay. This is a great example of how you and I get stuck for so long on the very beginning of a movie. We, we start, we, we pick up our pace though. We pick it up. He wishes he could be a fucking, this is why I went Game of Thrones and not Vampire. This guy's not hot enough to be what guy? a vamp. Let me tell you. The cousin. He needs not a name. Um, he's the one with the weird voice that we were, that we we're trying to get. Anyway, he and him and his henchmen are are chasing a boy while they're on the the men are on horses and have dogs the little boy on foot so and the boy's winning i mean god bless him he gets up a tree and luckily robin's there otherwise he they would have killed a child this child had did a a grand crime of killing a deer he'd apparently killed a lot of deer but they like killing people, especially the poor. It just makes everything look nicer. The Voltari, or the Volterra. Okay, but you didn't. You looked up that, but not this character's name. The guy. It's Guy of Gisborne. Guy of Gisborne. He's he's in some iterations of the story. He's the main bad guy, and sometimes he's he and the sheriff of Nottingham are the same person. Sometimes they're different people. You mean in the story, the lore of Robin of Robin Hood? Hood. Yeah, like in the Errol Flynn movie, he's the main bad guy. He's the one who has the big sword fight at the end with Robin Hood. Mm. But uh, yeah, Robin's just such a good fighter and so good with his arrows that he chases these guys off. He's like, Robin of Loxley's back in town. You tell that evil sheriff that well, he thinks things he are own- going to be different now. He thinks he owns the land that they're stalking the boy on. He has no idea what's happened. He still doesn't get it here. Mm-hmm. He just thinks he's he's scared off some overzealous guards or policemen or whatever the equivalent. And he thinks this little boy, what, he's just an innocent boy, but then the boy's like, no, I've stolen hundreds of deer. Right. I'm also going to be a little bitch later in the movie. Bye. Mm, bye. I mean, he's fine. This one. Okay. So now we go. Uh, now we get a glimpse into the bizarre, sometimes horrific world always depraved world of Sheriff of Rottingham. Nottingham. Damn it. It's going to keep happening. Nottingham. And his hair is so beautifully 80s. It is tease to the gods. That's a perm, my friend. Um, on Alan Rickman. On Alan Rickman. Yes. Which I said the sheriff. So I did put that. Um, so the sheriff is in his quarters at, at the beginning of this and <laughs> molesting some like of age women, hopefully. Um, but he was doing something sexual and, and also talking to his men. Great. And then you see the little hole in the, in his wall, which is key. Um, and you see a white contact. Well, okay. We don't know. It's a con. It's, there's no contacts in this land. Anyway, you see a white eye and then, and then he, the next scene is he goes down to the cellar where there's a infinite supply of dry ice and f- bog and and, mm-hmm. and neon snakes lights. and lots of falcons snakes and birds of prey snakes, are prominent snakes just free though they're just mm-hmm. in the in the water there's there's cement that you can walk on but in between little little ponds yes. inside the house they had to put those in um anyway but this is the layer this is where he keeps his his witch. His, no, it's his witch, but it's also the his caretaker. It's the person who's been with him ever since his parents died. They have a very weird relationship, but it's sweet. 
I don't know. But you it's know, got its weight in you, its own way. You know right away, though, that this woman has been running some kind of a con on him this whole time because we know right away this bitch has one white eye. I just saw it looking through the wall. And all of a sudden now she knows everything that we just talked about in his room. It's, I watched the movie twice this week. I picked up on it the second time. I was oh. Like, oh, because they cut. OK, they cut from that to that. Oh, OK. <laughs> and then she says the things that she just heard in the spy hole. It's the only reason to give her a white eye so you can see it in the hole and you see it on her yeah. immediately. But I don't even see color. It's white. It's the absence of no, color. No, I don't even. Unless it's on the screen and then it's all color. I'm bad at watching movies. I know. I love that he tells a falcon to shut up. It's very Azazu. Or, or you know. Like, Azazu. No, wait. Um, Aladdin. It's Jafar. Jafar. Where he's like, will you shut up? Deliciously evil. Just loves being evil. This is one of my favorite characters in movies. He is fantastic. Is Nottingham. This performance is just delicious. And it's and I love... silly. But but no, it's a human. Like he's he gets pissy in in a relatable way, and then lashes out in a monstrous way. Mm -hmm. But like his little tantrums are just—he's perfectly stunted at growth from whenever it is his parents were taken from him. <laughs> like you you can see the um, uh, not suspended animation, not lost in translation. Transition. Help me. Arrested development. Yeah, always money in the banana stand. Okay. Anyway, he's frozen in his little eight-year-old body with his big boy weapons. Uh, the, and this is, we talked about it on Star Wars, the trope from fantasy literature of the right, keep it a the witch. king who has a witch on, <laughs> on retainer. That's what Darth Vader was. You know, in Game of this Thrones, Stannis witch. has Melisandre. Yeah, and, and they're maybe the ones uh, helping them get power. And this is where you really see the dirtiness that this movie is going to take you to. Like, I mean, her nails are disgust. I don't, her nails are bothering me so bad. They look painfully unkempt. Her teeth are like eight layers of yellow. Yeah, but it, it's like, up. I think I was very jarred watching this movie the first time because it seemed tonally all over the place. Like this seemed like goofy Adam's family yeah. stuff. Other parts of it seemed like grimy Game of Thrones realism. Wait, but this is grimy too. I mean, this is when it gets gross. Yes, but it's also like ooky and kooky. But you and know he, right away. Alan Rickman is like, is giving a comedy performance. Because when he's with this woman is when he can act like a child. It's That's why he keeps her in the cellar. It's the only time he can be vulnerable and mm -hmm. not have all the answers. Um, it's not because he's ashamed of her necessarily. It's just, I want to come down here and feel my feelings. And I want you to tell me what's going to happen. Okay. Um, that's a good call, love. Thanks. Thanks. Um, thanks for not being sarcastic. <laughs> oh anyway, his witch is weird. But it... but. They, because you know going in, if you're me and not Matt, that if you know you know going in that she is deceiving him and and not the true ally he thinks that she is, or at the very least she's she's milking him for something. So it, it you see him vulnerable and and you see her as a leech. Again, I wasn't expecting so much uh, witchcraft and dark artistry in this movie. Although it's, really... It's Satan isn't like... No, because yeah. they, they say later on, these are just the old ways, which just means paganism, Pagan. which mm -hmm. means before the Anglo... Before the Christianization of England, we had upside we, down this is what we believed in, and now that stuff is considered you, evil. You're but, telling me Christians came in and they just went... That's right. There you go. Because he even has the thing where he turns the cross upside down and says, I can barely tell the difference. Yeah. And that's another thing that religion does is assimilates old things you know, the, the festival of of yule becomes christmas stuff like that kind of interesting and then they they literally have the celts come down and the celts who still cling to the old ways okay I'll robin robin goes to his father's castle finds his father dead his loyal sunk servant duncan is there but he has Aww. cut his eyes cut out eyes cut out and sewn shut in the most brutal way um and i mean there's no way to know how long ago this, ha like, right? Like he's, how far after this all started did Robin free himself and come on? Because it's like, so I think his dad says he's been away for four years and then maybe it takes another year for Robin to get out there. So like Nottingham had to have had some time to have like made this all really troubling. I think it's a year. I think that's how long it had, I, I'm, I'm kind of guessing. I think. 
I'm just trying to figure out how long poor Duncan has just been there in the dark with his bloody fucking eyes. Not still long. Got I think blood. that this kind of happens simultaneously with Robin arriving back in England. Wait, so he's able to like? Doesn't it say four months up? later? Oh, and then... well, yeah, you might be right. So it didn't take long for him to. You're right. You're right because Nottingham hasn't completely proven himself to any of the people who've been supporting him and helping him try to rise to power over here. Um, he's still trying to get them the riches he promised and make it worth their while. Those those men at that table, the mm-hmm. seven men. I yes. don't know. I don't know who those men are. They never say why they're doing that. And well, then because they, they're trying to get power. Well, I know, but why they're literally in that room chanting, like doing their druid chants. I don't right. get it. They pull a pull a map, a, a blanket over a map of England that a pentagram is over. <gasps> we shall rule the seven kingdoms of England. We're gonna rule the school. They're the pink ladies. They are, they're the pink ladies of of the Middle of Ages. Mm-hmm. Uh, Duncan tells Robin Hood, Robin, what happened? Because he's not Robin Hood yet. Robin, what happened to his father? The sheriff accused your father of worshiping the devil. Isn't this a thing politicians are always doing, folks? Is accusing others of what they themselves are guilty of. Think about it. And something super hard to, super easy to prove and super hard to disprove. Because it doesn't take much for for a person to believe that about another person and wouldn't somebody who's been conspiring with the devil deny that they've been doing it isn't that what they would say no i haven't been well and they would go to great lengths to hide it i I can't find any paraphernalia in your house that's what you would do that just proves how hard you're working to conceal it how ashamed you are that's why i'm saying you just let one little artifact slip through something planted on you and it's like ha you slipped up bitch there's your satan handkerchief Mm. Robin Ro- Robin notes his father told him it was foolish of him to go on crusade. What's the point of going to other people's land and forcing them to convert to a different religion? We never get to hear Azim's thoughts on this. That's uh, interesting. So Robin was more uh, religious than his dad. It, it could be religious. I mean, in history, it could literally just be this is what you do to go get glory and make a name for yourself. True. And his dad had already had his station, was already happy with his his status. And so Robin Hood was, pro- Robin was probably like, this is great status for you, but it's complacent and you're keeping the status quo instead of doing what's right. But you're probably right. It's like, no, let me go get some valor right quick. You know, though, it's more something a second son does because the first son's going to inherit everything. Doesn't need he's got it made. You can just wait for the dad to die. The second son's got to do something to make a name for himself. He's got too much of an adventure spirit, though. Like he's he's too restless to just sit there and wait. I mean, why else was he burning everyone's fucking hair and beating people up before he became before he left? He oh, he lost his mom. Right. Mm -hmm. And then and then his dad moved on for a time with a second person. So he just he didn't want to be there. He, he felt out of control of his surroundings. His dad was the one truly in control. And that would always have been the case if he didn't go get some, some straight cred. Robin cuts his hand, makes a blood oath. I will not rest until my father is avenged. I know this is a stupid point, but like you're literally about to fight so many people. Why do you cut your hand? You need, it's your sword hand, man. Anyone ever just hurt their cuticle? That shit hurts for like a week. I'm just gonna slice. That's how you show you're serious. You wipe your ass with your hand. You're gonna Not get back then. Now they head over to the estate of Lady Marion, the sister of Robin's fallen comrade Peter. They will give us hospitality and meat and mead. But they go in, and the woman of the house, who says, "I am the Lady Marion. I am Maid Marion." She's kind of fat, and Robin's hey. like, "No." They and don't say it. Why do you have to say it? Well, I guess. I'm fat. I can say it. Uh, and Robin's like, um, Lady Marion, you look um healthy. Uh, and then there's this armed and masked guard who attacks Robin and they have a little fight. But then it turns out that the armed guard is actually Maid Marion. What? This is not your grandfather's Robin Hood because here Ma- Ra- Maid Marion is a badass. Take this is pretty much the only time she does any fighting, though. Yeah, no, there's a couple other little. Um, she's very at, at the end scene. She's very capable of like fighting him off mm. she does she does things it kind of sets up that she's going to be as much an action hero right as he is which is not the case she is kind of just a damsel in distress in the movie even if she will occasionally pull a knife out and stab somebody right like she's she's been the man of the house by um necessity through this hard time she's without she's running her she's the reeve mm. 
or Steve, whatever you said. She's the Steve. Running her manor. And so they have to have the element of surprise. So it's just the old, looky here, I'm who you want. Shove you, shank you. Shiv you. Shawshank. Shawshank you. This is uh, Mary Elizabeth Mastrantonio is, wow. is Marion. She is King Richard's cousin. And while the king is away and Nottingham is uh, making a play, play for power and <laughs> plundering the country, she feels responsibility for taking care of the poor, of the plundered. Um, and now the sheriff's men arrive to hunt down Robin. There's a funny bit where Azim is looking through his telescope and then Robin looks through it and doesn't understand how it works. Now this exact- Who's the barbarian? Huh? Uh, really? Who's the more advanced civilization? You don't even understand simple optics this literal thing happens in dances with wolves the year before except kevin costner's character is the one who has the telescope and the oh my god native americans uh the sioux oh tribesmen then look into it and don't understand how it works so it's a callback i don't know if it's it, a callback it i guess be. it has so to be but, specific yeah or if it, maybe every i don't remember every kevin costner movie have <laughs> so maybe it happens in every movie maybe in dances with wolves it happens or, or field of dreams it happens water world i'm sure Sherwood Forest. They escape by going into Sherwood Forest, even though it's haunted. I'm immediately relieved when they step foot into the forest. I, re- I instantly realize, oh, this is where they get their safe haven. And and, I, and all of a sudden it flooded back to me every Robin Hood story of like, okay, yeah, it's tree houses. Fuck yeah, let's go. Once it, mm. yeah, once this they- This is when I got into the movie. When that's he when got Lacey the- sat up straight in her chair. So, hey, tree house. Swiss family, fuck me, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they flee into the forest. Now the merry men come out. Rufio is there. He's skating on a half pipe and we meet some of the, of the, of these outlaws. There's Will Scarlet played by Christian Slater. And, um, I've never met this little John actor. I mean, I've met him. I've not had the pleasure, but I don't, I don't recognize him either. It, it seemed like it's such an important role. I, I suspect I expected to see someone a little bit more. I don't recall his name, but he's an actor who's been, he's a prominent working actor, character actor. I, I really know. like, he, he grows on You're me. You're expecting. I feel like that's like one of the more Lawrence Olivier. I don't know. Just some a different big guy. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. I don't remember the guy's name. I looked him up because I too was like, wait a minute. Who is that? Uh, just, uh, just a guy from lots of stuff. I, I love how ordinary everyone looks, but it does make you realize why everyone's just like, oh, May Marion, ooh la la. Like there's no one even close to the attractive level that she is in this movie. And then, and then as far as men go, Christian Slater and fucking Cosner are just huge standouts mm. <laughs> among the, and, and Alan Rickman. Um, but it's just like, they are, there are slim pickings. If and presumably the them, rest of the guys are all like actual British actors. Just regular guys. Now we have some Hollywood stars and Morgan Freeman and the and, and then of course they have to be fucking brothers. A oh, spoiler alert. Lacey. I'm sorry. They end up being brothers. Oh my god. Some the people hotties. some people watch 10 minutes of the movie, listen to our podcast, pause the podcast, yeah, go back I to the know, movie. I'm sorry yeah. for those people. The hot jeans runneth deep. There's the there's a law of Robin Hood movies that Robin and Little John have to have a fight on the river. Yeah. To to and that ends with them both laughing. Ha, 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 we're that, friends now. How you become best friends. But it's like because this is a real Robin Hood story. His name isn't Little John. It's John, John Little. Little. See, uh, but Robin of Loxley is like I'm of noble birth. I'm better than all of you. Art thou in need of a Messiah? Because here I am. And they're all like, Yeah, we'll we'll follow your lead. Did he say all that? Yeah, he said, "Art thou in need of a Messiah?" Uh, I'm just saying. We're, uh, I was like, "Oh no, wonder they had a fight." He's being a real dick, <laughs> <laughs> um, right? Yeah, I know. Really, kind of uh, good sportsmanship of of Little John to be like, I, "I'm not at all intimidated by you." Later in the movie, Christian Slater does like say, "You're a you're a fucking rich boy. I expect you to 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 walk out on us when things get tough." And he's like. Will Scarlet, what have I ever done to offend you? Why do you hate me so? And it's like, it's actually because they're brothers. But like, he just said a good reason. You're just some fucking rich boy. And when things went bad for you, you came over here and... As soon as things are okay for you, you're going to you're going to skip out of here or if things get too real. You just you just have the means in the worldliness to leave this forest and go to another town. You'll mm-hmm. get by. Yeah, you're, you're LARPing. We are useful to you right now. Not meaningful. So you didn't notice the Christian Slater accent? 
he always he has such a gravelly voice that he just sounds like Christian Slater to me, even if he's attempting an accent some of the time. Uh, I'm sure if I listen, if I watch the movie again, I by know. now the Costner accents like now he's just talking like normal Kevin Costner. It's just like Avatar: Way of the Water, you know, as <laughs> as Jake Sully explains. I don't even hear it anymore. Don't even hear their accent anymore, or their their language. Like, the, the language it just sounds like might as well be English to me. Penis face. And pe- he, they say penis. That is what they say, right? Or penis head. Well, whatever. But like, so the Navi have penises. I thought they fuck with their hair. No, he's, but that's, this is Jake, Jake Sully's mind. He's integrating the things they're saying and make it make sense to him. This is like when I called my brother a penis head. Or fuck with their tail. They fuck with their tails. Tail face. Yes. You know, um, so I, I got sucked into watching JFK again. And who? what do you mean? We got sucked in. Well, we watched this long ass Kevin Costner movie and I, who sucked you in? The movie did the siren call of the movie. And who's that? What? You! You did that to you. I got sucked into watching JFK. From your own brain. I just want to make that clear that no one, this is not a work quota. This is just you doing No, that this isn't, you. unlike Robin Hood, this <laughs> isn't for work. This was just, I got some time to kill and just check out JFK. And um, I, I've, until I, I, I watched the movie many times growing up and thought Kevin Costner's accent in that movie is outrageous. And we live in new Orleans and we're like, that's not how people sound uh, until I went to work for a lawyer who sounds and acts exactly like Kevin Costner does in that movie. Wait, you don't know that he's not just doing a Kevin Costner. Who, who's to say oh, that, he that, could, that, he that could be, that's yes. the kind of person who would just put that on. Yeah. And, and all the different like colorful New Orleans attorneys, like the guy he goes to the cafe with and he's like, we're talking about the Mac daddy, daddy. Oh, <laughs> again, I went to these same restaurants and had lunch with these weirdo attorneys. It, it is impeccable how well observed it is. But, uh, why are they weird? Cause they say daddy. Nice. Sweet. But I feel like I will I will be uh, an old man with dementia uh, on my deathbed, and I will not forget the way Kevin Costner in the movie learns that JFK has been shot, and he reacts. Boss, the president's been shot. And he stands up and he goes, oh, no. Boss, the president's been shot in Dallas five minutes ago. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. I'll tell you, say, it's your rosebud. Oh, no. Oh. <sighs> That and then Jurassic Park 2. Three. No, three. No, no not you yet. See anything yet? No, <laughs> not yet. I'll put that in here and post it. <laughs> oh, honey. Bless your. See anything yet? No, not yet. Tight little. Throat. Tell us what's happening here. All right, church. All right, now. I'll check out whenever there's a church scene. Honestly, I just... If I wanted church, I'd go to church. Right? No. Um, I am i don't really... These are... The slides you... The screenshots you picked aren't great. This is the second time Robin's going to see Miriam, right? So he... Oh, oh, right. He needs access to the city. He needs access to, I think, the pastor. The priest. I guess this would be a priest. And, and to... Made Marion, maybe I don't know. He's trying to go get some allies or trying to get word somewhere. I don't fucking know, but he knows he can get access to the higher class people by going to church where they where they bother to interact a little bit with the common folk. Yeah, during, give out give, alms give, for the poor. Are, are alms? Alms. Does that mean I thought it was arms? Like literally, they touch each other. I didn't. I, like, <laughs> they, uh, yeah. You could have my favor. No alm, like palm, but no p. It just means it just means money, uh, a gift, charity for the poor. All oh, right, the, but we learn a few a few crucial things. We want learn one: Nottingham's got his eye on Marion. Two, um, that Kevin Costner smells as bad as he looks. That's true. Yes, he smells the vo- the. I cannot. All I have in big letters, block letters, is the breath, the breath these people must have. Ugh. Ugh. A lot of close talking. Well, Mar- Marion, Marion tells him Nottingham's raising an army and he's making swords. Lots of swords. But I don't know what for. And then Robin goes to speak with the bishop. This bishop seems a little sus. But Robin's like, oh, b- b- beloved bishop, here I am. 
And um, is it true what they said about my father worshiping the devil? And this bishop says, yeah, I think so. Well, and you can always tell a bishop or a clergyman is corrupt if they have jewelry. They gave him a big old ring. That's how you're supposed to know. If he were if he were down in the squalor and, and like dealing with the world as it is, he that jewel, that that thing would have would have been taken from him or he would feel the threat of it being taken from him. But you can tell he's a, one of the people who are in the pocket of the of the people who are plundering because he has no fear that they're going to take that ring. Yes. And like Friar Tuck at the end of the movie kills this guy. And it is it's his own version of the the working class, the the common folk rising up to th- overthrow their social betters. It's him, the friar, the one who actually interacts with the people going to this this elite bishop who sits in his ivory tower. Speaking of towers, look at this amazing tree house. No, this is not from the movie. Okay, <laughs> I just looked like, at tree what in the hell? Okay. Trying to get Lacey to perk up. And it worked. All right. So now we get to the training montage. The bows are as big as the people in this movie. Um, and Robin's been working with everyone who's been forced out of their home and is now in the woods. Um, just they kept saying, what can we do? We're just we're just these people. We're just plain people. We're farmers. We're this. And he's like, well, but have you tried weapons? So and they're like, what? Say that, what? Say that so again. he's just teaching them how they can do a lot with what they have and by guerrilla warfare by knowing the land by by clever tricks and traps and they've taken in your brain yes and they've taken your home a man fighting to defend his home is worth 10 of a hired man and they know that they have the, they just fucking lucked out that people are scared of the forest that that, that that these woods are haunted is the myth but for some reason i guess because these men have nowhere else to go They've already realized the woods are not haunted. Um, it's them who are making it haunted. I get, but it, it it registered more like old folklore. Not not. I mean, you'd think people would escape these men, run out, and be like, "There's dudes in there stealing shit." <laughs> that doesn't make people think things are haunted. There should have been like a of of the village scene where they're dressed up as monsters. Yes, right. To give a little bit That'd more understanding. Fun. Oh, well, Kevin Costner does say, there, you see? Wind there's chimes. Wind chimes. A child's toy. And in that moment, I'm like, what fucking animal gives their child that to play with? That makes sound. It's not a toy. It hangs. You don't even get to touch it. In fact, if a child touches a wind chime, you get in trouble, Matt. Um, yeah, But it's very smart that you have to get through the woods to, if you're trying to get to a to b outside of fucking uh, loxley what's the place they're at it's loxley what's the town not anyway the the woods are important they've got the right territory now i believe in the actual robin hood tales sherwood forest is not a literal forest forest meant like just royal preserve just a plot of land all right that's but they're always in the forest the merry men are always in the people don't know that don't know that forest didn't mean that. Um, okay. They start thieving. They start stealing. They, he's almost like the prince of thieves, you could say. Like, There's a montage of them stealing uh, stuff from all the nobles. Who pass through. Yes. And Those nobles are, I guess, going through to get good favor, carry good favor with the sheriff because they're bringing things. Yeah. They're bringing items, it seems. And I think at one point the sheriff's like, they're taking all the gold and they're supposed to be mine or they're looting the people I was going to loot. Something like They're that. They're stealing from him, stealing from my bucket, making me hurt them, and they love him for it. Thank you. That's exactly what happened. But so that make that anyway. That alludes to that these noble people are passing through to go and pay the respects and literally pay mm-hmm. uh, the sheriff because they can see the writing on the wall. Um, speaking of the writing on the wall, uh, five hundred gold pieces for Robin's head, but that goes up a great deal. But it doesn't matter. All right. Now, Friar Drunk is here. I mean, Tuck. Freudian slip. You know who plays Friar Tuck here? This is Michael McShane, who we last met. uh, American History X. Okay. Did I get it? So I guess that would have been the last thing we saw him in. I don't know if he's in American History X. Yes, that's the guy with, but he's, oh, he was in the butterfly effect. No, you're thinking of a different guy. No, he's Professor Keen Bean from Richie Rich. Oh, yeah. And he's my favorite non-Alan Rickman performance in the movie. Yeah, it's good. I love, they they kidnap him in the woods and they're like, we need spiritual guidance, Friar. Also, you have many 
giant buckets of, of mead. We'd like those too. Uh, and he's like lying on the ground and Robin has a sword over him. And Robin's like, do you yield? And he just starts biting Robin Hood's leg. Pretty funny. But yeah, I imagine this movie appealed to kids in the 90s because of all the like homemade traps and tree houses. Oh, and fuck yeah. That wall of leaves that pops up. Because yeah, I, I look at it and I think, how is this such a... Why is this such a blockbuster, like a family movie? But it's got stuff for everyone. Yeah. And I think of it as an adult hit, but I I guess it would have been kids too. What's the rating? I don't know what I meant to look at. I don't think we ever saw Nip. No, but Christian Slater does say fuck. Mm. Rated PG-13. You do get one fuck in a PG-13 when... Costner and Morgan Freeman get trebucheted over the walls. He goes, fuck me, they made it. <laughs> it seems almost unnecessary. Hmm. So, right. Sir Guy All of right. Gisborne gives... This is when you see the real depravity in the Alan Rickman character. Um, he gives his cousin, the sheriff, the news. That, oh, okay. Because the sheriff's like, screw this. We have to get these guys out of the forest. This is fucked. No amount of money is pulling him out or making people bring him to me. I need to send my guys. I'll send 20 guys. They send 20 guys. And like one comes back and it's the fucking cousin. And um, that's a huge failure. They don't have a lot of guys. And, but why, why have one less? I tell you. Um, anyway, so it's the first time Alan Rickman is being nice to someone, but it's a trap. He hugs like, him. Oh, cousin, oh, poor baby. Oh, baby oh come baby here. Boy. And then come stab here. And they got, people are so confident. Eat with where, still. People are so confident in movies that only have, you know, blades for weapons as to where to put them. Mm. When like some people can survive like 55 stab wounds, but no, no, he gives one little bloop. But people it, can survive stomach, 55 stab wounds with you if it's like antibiotics in hospitals. Fine. But these people are dying instantly, I'm just saying. So Maid Marion arrives in Sherwood Forest. She's attacked by two merry men nincompoops, but she overcomes them. And they're like, I was only doing my job, my lady. And they take her to see Robin, who's swimming naked in a pool. And she cannot control her creamer jeans all over okay. the place. And this is, uh, I, I feel like. Dances with Wolves also has Costner swimming naked in a in a in a it's stream. Not even that good of a butt. It's just like you wrote little it butt. In. Just a little. I want people to see my little butt. It's fine. It should, there's nothing to write home about. His father wouldn't write a letter about his butt. Is what I'm saying. Which is like, oh, you took me seriously about taking a bath. Ha ha. Now take me around. Show me all the stuff you're doing. He's like, well, we're doing some great stuff here. As you can see, I'm training them in archery. This little kid is shooting bows good and drunk every day and he's like you shoot bow good but can you do it when you're distracted here tickle your ear and the kid doesn't do it well and then marion's like well could you shoot a bow while you're distracted And he's like no problem and he's about to shoot and then she sensually wow. blows in his ear wow and then he shoots the arrow to the side there's a deleted scene where we see somebody get shot by that arrow yeah because someone dick. oh my god that's not funny no that's not real oh well but i mean he narrowly misses somebody who's in the background does almost shoot someone like can we not fuck around please they're they're the nobles they're they're these these people are their playthings mm. but what do you think of the chemistry between these the good. actors it's, and the characters it's good i buy like it. it i buy it i buy her um i mean him too but like she sells it she's got she's got good emotional reactions to things it's a it's a i think it's charming it's it's sort of low-key oh look morgan freeman's in this movie it's yeah. been a minute since we've seen him. What a nice. Well, there's a there's a night there's a sweet scene where a kid like talks to him like, "Why did God paint you?" And he's like, "Well, God likes variety." And they're having a sweet little exchange. And then Friar Tuck bullies his way in. He's like, "Stop talking to him, you you heathen, you barbarian." And Azim says, "Is not is not Allah also the God of Abraham?" Because he's like, "Don't, Don't talk to him about to your me. God." Mm-hmm. And um, let me tell you, as a former um, smug teenage atheist hey. who like talking to Islamophobic family members, that line does it never works ever. And are you saying that you're no longer an atheist, Matt, or you just no longer no a longer teenager? a teenager? Yes, oh, just checking. Try not to be smug. Uh, Robin is talking to Marion. He's like, "Here's the deal with me. My dad and I didn't get along, and I left for crusade on age at age twelve. Now I'm age sixteen, and he took up with another lady. I didn't like that." What? Wait, who's talking all this? Robin. He's talking to, to who? Mary, to Marion. 
Because oh. they're bonding. And he's, again, let me let you in on my backstory. Right. He, he, here's what happened. My mom died. My dad, he wasn't so happy. Uh, and then little John's wife is in labor. The friar can't help her because the baby is breech. Uh, you know, fry, the, the, the religion and medicine were the same thing. Your mm-hmm. friar would be the one taking care of this. But but Azim, he knows what to do. He gives her a, C, a C-section, I no, guess. No, no, he turns the baby. He turns the baby. Yeah, see how he's got his hand? He pushes the baby. No, he doesn't give her a C-section. He would not survive. C-sections did not exist then. Nope. He said he saw it done on horses. I don't know. She can't know. The baby's not turned. You don't know where the baby is. But if you have felt a lot of babies inside of stomachs, you can tell, oh, well, this is a butt and it should be a head. So he didn't know to turn it. This convinces Friar Tuck. Azim, you're not so bad after all. Let's get drunk together. He's like, I don't partake in alcohol. That's good. You talk, I'll drink. I thought that was sweet. Uh, also, uh, Azim keeps calling Robin. He keeps calling him Christian. And um, it's distracting because Christian Very. Slater keeps um, also, breaking character to say what? Yeah, right. I already made that joke. He also not on the air. Ugh, okay. uh, he also keeps calling Robin Sadiq, which means friend. Isn't oh, that nice? That's nice. Yeah. Well, a beautiful little three-month-old baby is born, and his father's like, "I have a son." <laughs> and he runs around. Everybody, rub him. Everybody, rub. He takes the fucking baby. He's dirty as hell, and he like brings him. He like mothers him. The movie mm-hmm. mother. Is called, oh yeah. <laughs> the baby's peeing in the air. No, that didn't happen. Um. All right. Um. Now we see what. Well, okay. So Marion now gets the download that like, sh- this is bad. Shit's going down. I don't understand why she didn't know to try to wa- write King Richard. She was the one that told him that there's gonna that they were making weapons and stuff. Yeah, so Robin's like, tell King Richard. So she writes to him, although they know where he is. They know how to write to him. Or is this just like Harry Potter and owls? Just go find King Richard. Yeah, I don't know. Um, Twilight Bark, I don't know. Um, 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 so they... She gives it... Because there's only... There's no post office. There's just clergy. So she gives it to the corrupt... Bishop, priest yeah. the bishop uh she gives him the scroll and he says, i put my best man on it and then she's like ah this is so serious that i'm going to be sending my first my lady in waiting so her her best friend best pal goes on the journey as well to deliver this scroll and i mean like immediately um the guy's like i'm not gonna bring it does he like hurt her i can't remember he do, he's he he stops just like why have you stopped he's like my horse is favoring this leg and then she leans over to look and he bonks her okay head. gives her a bonk and then puts her in prison um but we don't see that yet and and then and this is when we see the grand plan of of uh king riff nottingham nottingham uh and he, oh he needs more manpower um because the guys that were like in cahoots helping him rise because they're going to get their land they're going to get their power they're like this you're not doing a good job you haven't given us very much money what the fuck don't worry i have a plan i'm going to uh take advantage of simple barbarians and so he calls in the celts Celts. he's got a bunch of them they're gonna take over the forest and again, this has my favorite scene where they're looking over the map of Great Britain and they have a big pentagram on it indicating That's the for their favorite scene. It, yes. Why did they do this? Uh, you you take Wales and you take Northumbria. That's how North you put Umbria. it into seven pieces. Mm-hmm. That's how Satan would have wanted it. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Marion gets captured at her at her homestead of Nottingham. The sheriff of Nottingham orders her captured. Well, Robin made the crucial mistake of sending Robin, that's his name, Duncan. Yeah, the off blind, of the blind man off. To, he he felt Duncan needed some uh, an easier place to live. He's you know blind and in the woods, so uh, he goes with Marion. But they take advantage of that. Uh, Rottingham, Nottingham does, and leaves him alive after taking taking Miriam. And uh, they know that he's going to ride straight to Robin because they still don't know where in the woods he is. Um, and that's what happens. He leads them right to them. But he he he's blind. How's he going to ride? He gets on his horse. He tells the horse, I need your eyes tonight, my friend. And the horse, 
I need your eyes tonight, old friend. And the horse takes him to the right place. And as we were watching the movie, it's at this point that I said to Lacey, I want a horse. And then whenever I say stuff like this, she takes me very seriously. And is like, I oh, don't... honey, no, no, you, don't, say like you don't want a horse. Think about how bad that would be for your back. I mean, you just want don't. You worry. can't rotate. You can't. You want to. You also want a canoe and, and or kayak. And it's, you. I want you to want things, but I want you to want realistic things. These are not your things. Wouldn't it Think be nice to, to have a horse? You no. can just tell it to do something and it'll do no. it. That's nice. Have You're you friends been, with an animal. Have you ever been on a horse? Yes, I have. You think I'm going to get a horse? Being on a horse is the scariest fucking thing ever. I liked it. But wait. I hated it. Here's what you say. Sure you do. Or okay. Uh, there you go. You do- or nothing. I'm just saying, if we're going to spend money, I don't want to be on a horse. <laughs> We don't have the land for it, Matt. I know, but it's like me saying, like, I want to name my yacht the whatever. You know? Fine. We're not getting a horse. Okay. <laughs> all right. Um, and here's the the big scene that all of a sudden they're being completely invaded by fire and weapons and men and fur, and it's looking grim. They're, it's a good action sequence. It, it is. They... They do exactly what I thought they should do is like get all the kids up top in the tree houses. They're pulling them up. They're ch- trying their best to get them up there in time. They seem to do that. They're, we know that there's a newborn. There was just a baby scene. So I'm ca- I'm on the lookout for that baby the whole time. Yeah, you, you were really like anxious about this baby. I thought this is when the movie turns. Here's when the movie turns and I won't be able to like it anymore. They're going to kill the goddamn baby. You're, I or wish I could get invested in movies the way you can if a baby's involved. <sighs> I just, I, I just can't, I don't, I can't, and I don't. Um, okay, so they're all up in a tree, and then I'm thinking, get out of the tree! The trees, the fire, the fucking tree! The, it God looks damn. like, it looks like the Merry Men have won the battle, but then the, the bad guys start shooting them with fire with arrows. Fire, right? it's like so the trees are on fire, the tree houses are on fire. Burning the ropes. And then there's a very heroic scene, because Robin Hood had not been had a hero. Uh, they needed that. But in a really sweet scene between Bit Little John and his wife, and they're his yelling wife, back, Fanny, Fanny, and they're yelling back and forth, at, at like they like they they just have this hopelessness in their face of like I'm not you're one of us is about to die and we're not going to be okay after this. But then Robin Hood swings on a fucking perfectly placed rope and and then they're fine. And well, but, he keeps, but, keeps yelling Fanny, and um, it's Britain, so everybody keeps laughing because that means vagina. <laughs> So you guys, it's called acting. I mean, um, all right. So that sucked. Anyway, no, I like, I like it. So Fanny and the kid are fine; they're all together. But now Robin's stranded on a burning treehouse. He tries to swing on a rope, but the rope is shot with fire, and he falls. And oh, you know he's dead. Anyway, he's he's down. Yeah, when they sure reveal what. he's alive, I dropped my plate for sure. Um, and the. Th- after all their heroic efforts, it, th- they they still lose, and they round up everybody. Well, they r- round up Christian Slater and a bunch of others. Right. But I'm not sure how Fanny got a... Or the people who didn't get taken, I don't understand They just that. went to the right trees. I don't know. Right. Okay. So there's a, a handful of people who did not get taken, and they're just kind of like looking around the forest like, because they were not everything Anyone else left? And then Robin's there. And Morgan Freeman is there, and Little Morgan, John's yeah. there, and they're... And Fanny. Left to I, pick up the I piece. do enjoy Fanny once she gets to be a character in this movie. Yeah. Marion is in mass. And the priest delivers her communion, says Corpus Christi. Lacey and I had a lot of fun then saying San Antonio, (laughs) Fort Worth. (laughs) She, Nottingham, says to her, like, well, you're going to marry me because if you don't, I'll execute. He'll execute all these prisoners, including the children. He can't allow these children to grow up to be his enemies. So really, Marion, the blood's on your hands if you refuse to marry me. And she's like, I guess I have no choice. But she is satisfyingly upset and distraught. She runs away. She has to go think about it. She's she, she's a good actress. She's selling. This could have been a silly or a throwaway moment, but all the times they need her to be emotionally invested and, and to show angst. She's very convincing. This is all I ever wanted in a Leia. You don't. What a princess. Yeah, you don't see the scene where she's tuckered out and is, is sleeping on a bench. <laughs> oh, well, the children are going to die. Uh, Alan Rickman goes into the prison. He's touring the prison. He's delighted at how tortured they all are. And then Christian Slater, Will Scarlet, says, uh, I'll go get him. 
Yeah. I'll I'll turn coat him. I'll go make sure he's dead. For and you, you believe it because he hates Robin Hood. Hates him. Well, and the guy believe the guy. The sheriff believes it because he, Will's offering the service, and all of his own people are like, "You asshole! You son that of a bitch! So some you shit pig you fuck! You that is just like you." And he's like, all right, "Okay." Um, and they are in like three inches of just shit water. So. All of those men survive, but they're all going to die. I just want to let you know that. They whip they whip Christian Slater to make it look convincing, like he convincingly got away so that if he does run into Robin, Robin believes him. Believes that he's going to come in as a double agent. Oh, Robin, my friend. Yes, I'm here uh, with good intentions. You know, Alan Rickman, I realized this is the Severus Snape plan arc thing. You think you think he's actually a bad guy pretending to be a good guy, but right. actually he's a good a guy pretending guy. to be a bad guy pretending to be good who's actually good. Mm-hmm. And a sad guy. Yes, and a sad guy like Snape. I love Lily Potter. <sighs> so uh, yeah, he he he's like he has his big emotional fight with Robin Hood. I'm actually your illegitimate brother. This is the cutest and weirdest tone thing. But then you think about it and you're like, no, this is exactly the Robin Hood tone. This is the chaos that I've learned to love. He's just, it's so fucking serious and it could have been really melodramatic, but instead it's like a child. I have a brother. It's just so sweet. It's so sweet. And so stupid. And it's like, that's exactly what the moment needed because that shit was heavy, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm your illeg- I'm your bastard half brother. I hate you. you. You hate me. I, I have a brother. I have a brother. brother. So I was sure Christian Slater was going to die in this movie because they enjoyed too much of each other at that moment. But he doesn't die. Everyone, he lives. It's another reason why this movie did so well. It's all perilous enough, dirty enough, gross enough, scary enough. And no one dies. Like you just keep watching this. You don't have to have the sad part. No one dies. And and the thing, the death that I thought was going to happen that would suck is it seems like Morgan Freeman's going to die. Oh sure. Sacrificing himself to save his white friend. But but he doesn't. I, He's uh, fine. Right. And then I realized no, it's Christian Slater. That's why they had this big emotional thing so that now there's stakes and now he can die. He didn't die. That man lived. And Robin commits. I will join your cause. I'll fight for you. Well, you already were, you but already okay. Were quit yeah. committing. The the sheriff of Nottingham is going to hang all of Robin's men as part of his wedding ceremony, and people come out to the ceremony because they love a good hanging. Uh, we get a scene with the sheriff and and the witch, and the witch reveals well because he he finds the spy hole mm-hmm. and realizes what it's the her. Fuck, you've been you lying know, to me this whole a, time. You're a con artist. How 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 could you? And then she says, like, you were nothing before me. In fact, I gave birth to you. I gave birth to you, and then I went and found the royal the 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 child who is actually the heir of Nottingham, killed, killed that baby, him. put you in its place. Switcheroo. Yeah. All babies look alike. It's fucked up. Don't do that. Don't do it. But yeah. All it's right. like, okay, yes, we are these twisted witch people and our paths are are intertwined. It's are you a even very... really a witch? Or is this just so... What is this? <laughs> it's a very intense uh, scene. It is. And uh, it's great. Chef's kiss, I wrote in my notes. Chef's I kiss. I put that in my letterbox review. You did? Alan Rickman, chef's kiss on the mouth. I wanted to spice it up. All right. And I see a... Tr- <laughs> All right, now 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 it's time to uh, storm. The go castle. save all those oh. all all the trees, people, the merry men who've been captured. Let's get this shit right. Also, I don't want I don't want my lady to marry that man. Um. So they use the manpower they have very strategically. They come up with a good plan. They're going to cut down all the hangmen all at once. Um. Even Fanny's going to get to going to going to get to fight too. She insists on it. I love it. She's my favorite part of the fight. Um, things don't go exactly as planned because that little boy noticed Will and thought Will was up to no good. It's a whole thing. Um, but you get some fun. You, you get, get the some fun. fun. You get some fun. I love the. So they, they're not able to cut all the, the ropes and they're all hanging on the. There's just a lot. It's a Before whole Before all of that, though, I love, oh. I love a good we're smuggling weapons in thing and yes. we get to see how they do that. Yes. And like. Robin puts a cloak on and covers himself in feces so nobody wants to go near him because he smells. They pretend, pretend Azim has leprosy. And they're like, oh, right. his finger's lying on the floor over there. 
<laughs> That's how they're doing all this through subterfuge. It's fun. You didn't even mention Fanny, who does the best subterfuge. She's just like, oh, I love to see a good hanging, I do. And then she's dropping, dropping weapons and just. And then her husband comes to sit by her and she says. She's a droid. She gets ignored because women are ignored. Mm. They hide in plain sight. Well, they just don't think they're a threat. They don't think they're smart enough to be a threat. Just like droids in Star Wars. Her husband comes to sit by her and she says, hello, my lover. Uh-huh. Because they do have eight kids and they do love each other, which is refreshing to see. Um, Azim is smuggled in a bunch of gunpowder and, and some explosions happen. Okay. Well, the friar smuggled in that, but in his barrels. Those were his drinking okay. barrels. Anyway, but so a hubbub happens and they can't. He kicks, they kick all the, they kick the buckets out from underneath the hangman and now they're being hung. Time is a wasting. And then I don't remember who it is, but someone had the great idea of just, let's knock over the gazebo. So the whole thing yeah, they're little hanging John. To, I just love that. I, I do too. Yes. Like, yes. It just literally pushes over the whole thing and it works. It gets old. It's very satisfying. It really is. This is a lot of fun. This, this sequence is a lot of fun. It culminates with Costner and Freeman okay, getting trebucheted. I yes. want, but I, but a full minute and a half before they are trebucheted, I see a trebuchet in the background. It's just part of the part of the look of the scene. It's an Indian town. And I go, they're going to trebuchet these motherfuckers, mm -hmm. and they do. And it's the most Disney fun inflatable balloon in the lake kind it's of. It's like the catapult for Whoop! Richie Rich. Yeah, it's some good trib. I mean, because in in actual reality, they would go this way and splat. But the, in this reality, it went. Ooh, they they did a Matilda. And then they both go, we did it. Door of the Explorer right. comes out. We did it. Mm -hmm. okay. And now, no, none of this is finished without a good rape scene. Um, so, all right. Alan Rickman is done. He's fucking done with this. He wants to he wants to immediately impregnate Mary Mary and he needs that claim to the throne. And apparently words said between a clergyman and 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 this guy and the woman he killed against her will, a witch no one knows. Apparently, between these four people, that makes it saying good. these magic words of "you're married" will be legitimate in front of all people. Makes total sense. He says, sense. "For once in my life, I want something pure." So he does this. But he but he wants to fuck so bad that Maid Marian is not wearing underwear. You see her butt cheek at one point. Just the dress comes up, and it's like, yeah, no, you full access. Hmm. Um. And, and he, he doesn't he, want to. The just his mother. His seed in the no, but he doesn't want to do it right now. But the mother, the, the witch, feels her be her belly. She's ripe. You got to do it now. He's like, mm, right now. Yeah, okay. but mom, can you leave? Like, you want me to no, fuck her right now? Sure. Like, nope, gotta. Lacey, could you touch a woman's belly and see if she's ripe? I can't even touch my own. No. Uh huh. Um. Get on with it. Come on, say the thingies, and he says them. They're married. He pushes her over. She has the most complicated dress, but no panties. And um, Robin Hood comes in. He does. Robin Hood no, comes in. And in they the finally window. have a sword fight. Now, Re Alan Rickman pulled out this giant sword. Bigger than I think anyone could hold. And it occurred to me, the hmm. way he's moving, it's not, not in the performance like in the things he says, but in the way he carries himself, the way he moves, the way he fights, and the size of that sword, I thought, Lumberjack. Did Adam Driver study this right? performance and I'm, use this as a model for Kylo Ren's sort of fighting style? Because he also kind of hunches and moves like this and has a giant sword and plays the that. weight of the sword. And I even said Alan McRin was the Adam Driver of his time. Like, especially in that cloak. I said that when that scene, when we see who that is, I'm like, I thought that was Adam Driver. Oh. He's got, he's just got that like emo but still cute. Yeah. Mm -mm. I'm always going to be this guy. I'm brunette. Um, yeah, super satisfying, harrowing. I get to save you, Maid Marian, although you're saving yourself a bit too. And then Azim gets to finally burst through after kill after killing the mom on a the witch on a spike or something. Um, if any gets not one but two. Mo Chances to just throw her entire body like a sack of potatoes against a mm -hmm. wall twice. Because after they kill Alan Rickman, she pops up for the you know the slasher killer's oh, one right. final right. lunge, and then Azim kills her, and he's like, he's finally fulfilled his obligation to Robin. I finally 
now that this Sinky. land is safe, I'm going to go find some other unsafe areas that will treat me as though I am a criminal. Yeah. All right. And then you called it before. I mean, you just heard his voice for a second, but I did not pick up on it. You're like, is that Sean Connery? You knew I, didn't know, I didn't know Sean Connery was in this movie. I know, movie. and you're not supposed to. It's supposed yeah. to be a callback. I'm saying because you knew he was in a Robin Hood, hearing a voice that sounded enough like it, a disembodied voice, made you go, it couldn't be. Yes, but I think I would only need to hear one syllable of Sean Connery and you anywhere. And you, okay, fine, fine. Because no one else in the world sounds like that. Yeah, but I am very in tune to things like that, too. And I just didn't hear enough. They didn't get a... It doesn't matter. I've just seen so many Sean Connery, James Bond movies. Oh, that's true. That, that, arr, the, 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 does anybody have any objections? If anybody so say you speak now or forever hold your peace. I mean, aren't they all just so fucking tired? Like, this is our good <laughs> thing. This is the good thing that's happened. We've fucking been planning for days on end this wedding. You see this fucking chandelier made of twigs and fucking candles that we did here we're doing this for the noble people of this land we're still common people they're letting us come to this wedding although we, we put all this up and now the noblest of noble people who did not help at all yeah where have you been where have you fucking been the whole country's going to shit we have a feast because it's a wedding how oh, that is rich erd Richard. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so like, I'm not moved at all that he's like, oh yeah, you saved us. Because in the animated Robin Hood, it is Richard's return that really means that the rest of everybody's going to be okay. That that like, that like turned the tide. Here, it's like, no, they were fine. They planned a wedding and everything. Nope. The same thing happens in the animated one. Everyone wins and then you cut to flash forward. Now it's the wedding and now King Richard is there. They win a fight scene, but they don't like, you don't feel like, okay, this land is now like secure we've defeated the main bad guy but then another bad guy will just pop up it's still that's true it's still a, like a, a a vulnerable place that's already been proven it can be penetrated there's so, i mean you have to you have to have the king well, it's the nature of the nature of monarchy at this time you know kings uh the job of being a king was you go out on you go out to fight kings english kings actually spent most of their time outside of england okay well then they need a different system Shit seems a little buggy. A little I wish to walk buggy. down, walk the bride down the aisle. Uh, okay. That's a great, great Sean Connery. It wasn't bad. And uh, and then Friar Tuck winks at the camera and he's like, now get out of here, <laughs> you you scamps, you. They're going to go, fuck. It's like the end of Aladdin. He's like, major look. And that's the end of the movie. Okay. <laughs> it's so weird. But then, yeah. Then it's over. Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. Lacey, I can't wait to hear your final oh, thoughts and you. star rating. Oh my god! Um, yeah, I I thought it was a bit of a mess, but then the mess all gelled together, and it seemed like a an intentional mishmash of things, and it kept it light enough and fun enough, and and kept me on my toes enough that I didn't get bored. I thought I was going to get bored. I really struggled until Robin enters Sherwood Forest. I just didn't know where it was going to go. And once I realized it's going to the trees, <laughs> I was fucking in. And and you know Alan Rickman, Jesus, I didn't know what to what what he was going to do next. Um, so I don't know that I'd watch it a bunch of times. If I were a kid, I would have watched it a lot. I do see that. Um, I, I love a good montage, a fighting, people getting better at stuff. Love that. Uh, yeah. So three stars. Mm -hmm. Should watch. I uh, pretty much second everything you say. It is a mess, but it it's a lot of fun. I really. Fun. Yep. Really had a lot of fun watching this. The second time I had even more fun. I give it three and a half stars. It's pretty weird. Three and a half. You had three yesterday. I watched it again today. That's not a uh, But it's the thing where you watch a movie for the second time and everything that's weird, you know it's coming. So it doesn't. The, the, the weird, um, like Sam Raimi photography, the way the camera yeah. swoops around everywhere. Like you would think this would be just more classical classically shot like a camera that barely moves well everything. because the 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 scenery is doing the work for you you don't have to make it interesting it's like this is gorgeous you're in a real castle right that's tip the, traditionally it? what ah. you would do if this right. were a david lean movie it would be just 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 look more sort of uh just just have a less active camera and that it, it could be kind of distracting but i think it is quick to good use because this is a weird movie this is a, a movie that's uh but those weird shots are just like in citizen kane right like those weird shots are saved just for 
Dallin Rickman. Not really, part. no. Not? Okay. But it is. It, it, I it's, it was meant to be like, here's where it gets weird. It's him most of all. Yeah, that's a good point. Thematically, it is mostly him, but it's it's in other parts of the movie too. It, anyway, it didn't. I'm not saying it ever bothered me, but the first time I was just like, this is weird. I'm taken kind of out of it. Once yeah. you accept it, you just give yourself over to the movie. It's a lot of fun. The cast is great. Alan Rickman, this is one of the great. I can't believe I've never seen this performance. It's so great. And I'm seeing something else that I just um, the saw. Harry Potter movies. <laughs> no, something I put on my watch list today. God damn. Dogma. Yep, it's dogma. <laughs> it's dogma. It's dogma. The movie we're going to cover in two weeks. Yeah. Cool. Looking forward to watching that. A double Rickman. Hey, we've gotten some reviews on iTunes lately. It it tickled my uh, tickled my fanny. You want to know how that happened? Lacey I has been asked for them. In going and asking for them. <laughs> I ask now. Only of people who I know already listen. To all of you, our merry men, women, and others, our merry friends, uh, mm. please review us and give us five stars. Please! Robin! If you are, again, listening to this episode, you can watch it, and you can watch all the new episodes of Load Bearing Beams we make on YouTube. Go to Load Bearing Beams Pod on YouTube and watch our episodes if you're watching on youtube already subscribe please please follow us on social media tiktok Lacey's very active on tiktok so in the active. film talk talk film talk community load.bearing.beams on tiktok you can follow us on instagram at load bearing beams follow the show on twitter at load bearing pod follow me on twitter at matt stokes nine. thank you stitch and story time for for suggesting this movie it was a romp and thank you for my pile of garbage that you mailed me that was really sweet Thank you, Stitch and Storytime, for the garbage and also the garbage you sent. No, this movie's not garbage. It's ah. good. We had fun talking about it. I'm on Letterboxd at Matt Stokes 9. Lacey's on Letterboxd at... Loadbearing Lacey. I'm also now on Discord. This is Loadbearing Lacey. Which Discord? Ah. Okay. Okay. Uh, the There's music, more than one. Yeah. The music <laughs> on Loadbearing Beams is by my band. We have a, we're have we called Rural Route 9. Our album is The Joy of Averages, and you can hear it on Spotify, Apple Music, Google Music, Amazon, Bandcamp, all that shit. Check it out, will you? That's all I've got to say. Okay, I love you. Bye! Three, four...